Hey, it's the Bennington Show on a Thursday. I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. And I am Ron Bennington. Uh, mm-hmm. I just uh, have some breaking news and an exclusive. There is a hurricane heading towards Florida. This is not oh, a yes. test. This is the real deal. 844-ROCK-GOD, 844-ROCK-GOD. This may be the most amount of transplanted people at one time. They're talking about up to 2 million people uh, from Florida to South Carolina that are getting mandatory evacuation notices. And it looks like uh, this thing could, the eye of the storm could end up over Daytona, Florida, but you're never sure about those things. I I can't imagine how, what the roads are going to look like with this massive amount of people going, oh shit, west, north, what do we do here? Waves. You've got to have waves on your phone, and then you ride the waves all the way out of the state. (laughs) I I don't remember, you were a little kid, but we were on that coast when a hurricane was coming, and we were on like a vacation week, so I'm like, oh, let's just head up, you know, to Georgia. And we were with just huge amounts of people while we're listening to the weather on the radio and just hearing these horrible things. It might have been Hurricane Andrew. I'm not 100% sure. But we ended up like in the mountains of Georgia yeah. just riding it out. But I remember feeling like, we better get out of here. It just kind of felt like it was on your ass the whole time. Yeah, it was right. It felt like it was right behind you. And, uh, you know, weather people, this is the only time anyone really pays any attention to them at all and they take full fucking advantage of it yeah well i was watching the governor of new york today and he was uh rick scott and he's wearing a a hat that says navy and i'm like you're the governor not the admiral (laughs) i know back in 72 you did you know some time on a ship but stop (laughs) acting like this is a navy issue but you become very attached to that weather person. Otherwise, you're just checking your app. If it's nothing big, but then you have to, you need a voice of reason. I'm straight weather channel. Yeah. And uh, they're all over. I mean, they got people in the Bahamas, people in Haiti, people in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. And they're just throwing it back and forth. And they have that lag where they really can't hear each other talk. And so they both stop, wait 10 seconds, and then start talking at the same time. <laughs> It's really, really great television. 844-ROCK-GOD, 844-ROCK-GOD. But all kidding aside, there's no reason to ride these things out anymore. Years ago, it was always like, oh, hurricane's coming. Let's get booze. This will be funny. But once you saw Andrew, once you saw Katrina, no, you got to get out, man. You can't play that game. And, of course, there's many more people living in those areas than used to. People didn't used to live on the ocean 60, 70 years ago. You know, it would be like fishermen that would have beach places. And now there's just these giant houses and you're never more than 60 feet from the house next to you. So all this really expensive real estate uh, is being threatened as well. I don't know what the fear is when people say, oh, if I if I go or if I board up my windows, if I do this, stuff, I'll look like a real jerk if it doesn't. I, feel that, I always felt that way, too. <laughs> I don't want to look like a wimp next to my neighbors. I'm not putting plywood up. <laughs> I remember that that happened uh, one year where we we left. I don't know if it was a mandatory evacuation, but this would have been on the on the West Coast of Florida. And we had taped up our windows and then we had gone away for a couple of days. But that hurricane, either it didn't really hit or it ended up being weaker. And then you said how embarrassing it was driving up and our like our tape windows had still been there for days. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, we look like animals. We did. We felt really embarrassed. <laughs> and now, you know, uh, uh, you have uh, you have this whole thing that 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 taping of the windows doesn't even help. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to do anything other than what's the idea that it'll break in large chunks? And that was of the hope. That was the hope <laughs> that they would uh, break in really large uh, chunks and then only a really large chunk would get into you. But remember the time we were lived in South Florida and that storm came up and like took our trampoline like a mile away. Yeah. <laughs> this these winds now are two to three times higher than those winds. And when we were in the house that night, it felt like, you know, the world was ending. Yeah. And that was, I don't even think that storm even have a name. 
to it. Yeah, that was just like a regular tropical storm. It ended up being terrifying. All right, let's hear from some of the Florida people. 844-ROCK-GOD, 844-ROCK-GOD. Give us a call. Let us know what it's like where you are. Here's Ben in Jacksonville. Ben. Hey, it's pretty bad out here. We're They all told us to get off the island or they're, you're pretty much going to die. Um, I'm in a zone A area up in the uh, probably in northeast Jacksonville, and they told us you need to get out. Now, are you getting out? Are you going to listen to them? Uh, yeah, I'm getting out. Um, I'm on the way now because uh, it's coming, and I was through Andrew, and I'm not going to live through that again. Well, where are you going this time? I'm going to Gainesville to my parents' house. All right, so that's good because I don't think that you're going to be able to find hotels almost anywhere on the East Coast. Yeah. So if you got people somewhere, that uh, that makes sense. All right, Ben, take care of yourself, buddy, and best of luck Thanks, with everything. Bud. Peace. Uh, here's uh, John in Miami. John, what's up, buddy? Hey, Ronnie. Yeah, I didn't heed the warning. I'm here in South Florida, and let me open the glass door here, and I'll tell you. Yeah, I think we've got a wind gust of about five miles an hour right now. I know. I get that joke. It's never. <laughs> it's like laughing, like looking outside and seeing flurries when the blizzard's on the way. I'm like, is this right. it? But you know, uh, Miami is supposed to be beneath the, the the place that it hits now it still would be tropical storm right you know that stuff can still be uh bad but um, but they're not part of that mandatory evacuation area no, no they're definitely not part of that but it doesn't mean i think can't turn into them right that's the weirdness about that these things turn you know everybody's looking at the weather people as if this is a science they've got all the science into it but you're still studying a certain amount of chaos there. You know what I mean? You don't know exactly where these things are going to touch down. And uh, the, they whip, you know, so people far away are going to be catching it. And then you catch the back end of it and uh, you don't want to be outside. And, of course, there's always that eye of the storm where I don't think people do it as much as they used to. But years ago, they would be like, oh, the hurricane's over, over. because it becomes a sunny day in the middle of that hurricane, and then you walk out, and you're like, this is great, let's see what happened in the neighborhood, and then that shit comes back right. in, and you're and you're cut off. 844-ROCK-GOD, uh, 844-ROCK-GOD. Um, here is uh, Patrick. Patrick, what's up, buddy? Hey, Ronnie B., how's it going? Hey, what's up? We just had these uh, Wisconsin vacationers interviewed on the Weather Channel a few minutes ago saying they're staying there. They can't wait to get back on the beach on Friday, and it's not going to be any worse than a little blizzard back home in Wisconsin. You know, I get it. You know, uh, when I'm on vacation, I'm like, well, this this is it. You know, this is what's <laughs> happening. But the reality of it is uh, it's one thing to die. It's another thing to just be stuck without air and electricity and water Would you remember for a week. How how many people, the judgments and criticism was so harsh of the people who didn't get out for Katrina. People were like, come on, they told you to go. Why did you stay? Well, this is this is why you have to go. Like, remember what happens when people go, hey, everybody warns. We get we get hit by these kind of storms all the time. They end up being nothing. Sometimes they're not nothing. And also, if you look at Katrina, a lot of those people were living check to check. They didn't have the money to go. Right. They were poor people who had nowhere to go, and they thought, I guess at least we have a roof here. Sure. But that Katrina was just a goddamn nightmare. Uh, here's Rich in Florida. Rich. Hey, how you doing today? Hey. Uh, yeah, I was. I live over in uh, my Fort Lauderdale, and uh, I decided to get the hell out of there because uh, about 10 years ago I was living in uh, Atlanta, and we had just a quarter inch of rain. A uh, quarter inch of flooding, and it was one of the worst experiences ever. But uh, I'm over here down by uh, Naples, Fort Myers, and I think I found, like, the last hotel here because I was trying to extend my stay. And all I did all night was go on the uh, Internet for hours trying to find a, uh, another place to extend my stay. Yeah, uh, it's they people were prepped on this. Well, when Liz 
sets fire uh, called yesterday and said, uh, we're off work till Tuesday. They never used to do shit like that. In yeah. They never used to say, oh, don't come to work. There were places that were acting like, don't go running out of here. And think you're going to have a job when you get back. Because that <laughs> shit don't fly. Are you a real Floridian or not? Because that was always the thing. When I first moved to Florida, people were like, oh, when we get to hurricanes, it's great. Everybody goes to the big hotels and we party. And I'm like, ah, that sounds fucking great. Yeah, cool. I like to have a little fucking cocktail. You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, th that joke ended a long time ago. But when I started in radio, we used to have a hurricane room that was always filled with water and blankets and all that shit, and your name would be on a list of things that you would do. And I'm like, fuck that. I'm not part of the hurricane thing. <laughs> You're I'm getting the, home. I, I'm the person you brought in to say, say drunks, uh, uh, fucking funny, stupid lines in between Leonard Skinner records. <laughs> no. You know, I had zero background in broadcasting. I wasn't thinking like, ladies and gentlemen, I just got this in. <laughs> And I, you know, I had a fucking baby and shit. I was going to get my family out. <laughs> Let the overnight guy make a fucking hero out of himself. I'm not going to be the guy who stays on the air for 40, 48 straight hours. When Who's going to be listening anyway? Oh, uh, there's a hurricane coming. We're in real damage. Let's turn on the home of rock and roll and see what those guys have. Um, hey, uh, here's Tom. Tom of Florida. What's up, buddy? Hey, buddy. We're down here in Bradenton. We're just going to ride it out. Uh, we we were able to listen to Frankie McDonald, so we have our Chinese food and our pizzas ready is, and our cell phones charged and our tablets charged. Is uh, Frankie all over this one? Frankie is all over it. He's all over everything. Yeah, he's the best. The only problem here is two inches of rain and you're flooded. Yeah, and you you guys are, of course, way on, way on the back end of that, but uh, I was talking to... Uh, Fezzi today, and he says they're already getting high winds and it's cooled off there. And he's on the other side of the state of where this, but those bands go whipping around. You know, there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah, it tends to rain more over on this side than it will on that side because the bands just keep coming around. All right, buddy, take care of yourself. Take, take care, buddy. And uh, get some Chinese food, get some pizzas, <laughs> and make all that stuff happen. Felix in Jacksonville. Hey, how you doing? Hey. Hey, uh, um, I just wanted to kind of do a public service announcement out there. Anybody that's got diabetes, I'm a pharmacist. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that uh, to get your refrigerated medications, you need about a week at least. You need all your medications out there because there's not going to be anything in, in North Florida for a couple of days. I'm sure the power is going to be out with all the overhead power lines. And, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to get your medications. Make sure you have all your meds on hand. Well, what do you do about this stuff that needs to be refrigerated if the power goes out? Well, uh, you should probably get about uh, 50 pounds of dry ice and stick it in your freezer. In your freezer. Um, and then uh, when the power does go out, that should last for another 48 hours in the cooler. So that should buy you some time. Uh, insulin can stay unrefrigerated for a little while. Um, but uh, for the most part, um, that's about all you're going to be able to do. All right, man. Thanks for the call. Felix all right, in Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville doing a lot of uh, evacuations. All the way up to South Carolina mandatory evacuations. 844 Rock God. 844 Rock God. Chris, do you want to check in with weather with uh, Frankie McDonald and see what he has to say? Yeah. This is Frankie McDonald, my own TV station live in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Hurricane Matthew is now headed towards Florida on Friday, October 7th, 2016. It's going to bring up to 50 plus millimeters rain, especially in the east coast of Florida, including Miami, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Daytona Beach. It's going to bring a lot of rain. Winds are going to be very strong, gusting up to over 100 kilometers per hour. It's going to bring big, huge waves crash on beaches and shores in Florida. It's going to bring very strong winds with a lot of wind driven rain and sideways rain, including Jacksonville, Florida, and Jupiter, Florida. It's going to bring a lot of rain. That's going to cause a lot of flooding. There will be a lot of puddles in the streets and sewers will back up in the streets since the waters are very warm in the state of Florida. And that's going to cause a lot of hurricane force winds with a lot of rain in the state of Florida, especially in Miami, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Jacksonville, Florida as well. Winds are going to be very strong. That's going to 
snap power lines in half and snap the tree branches in half and bring down power lines and snap the telephone poles in half and snap the tree branches in. And maybe bring down transformers well. Hurricane Matthew is capable of knocking off power in the state of Florida on Friday, October 7th, 2016. People in Florida, be prepared. Have your rubber boots ready for wrinkles ready, Rachel's ready. When the gold side, wear your rain gear, wear your rubber boots ready, wrinkles to keep you dry. Don't open up your umbrella or your umbrella can get broken. Order your pizzas and order your Chinese food. Buy cases of Pepsi, buy cases of Coke. Have your iPads charged, have your iPods charged, have your cell phones charged, have your laptops charged, have your tablets charged, have your 3G, 4G ready. When a hurricane gets bad, get inside the house so you can, so you can be safe and make sure to stay indoors and don't go outside to make sure you have your flashlights, candles, crank up radio, extra batteries, generators, battery operator lanterns ready and bottle water ready as well. Make sure to stay away from the beaches and don't go near the shores in Florida, especially in Miami, Florida and Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, Jupiter, Florida and Daytona Beach, Florida as well. If you have, if you have anybody living in Florida, be prepared for Hurricane Matthew on Friday, October 7th, 2016. Take care. Stay safe. Don't get caught in a Hurricane Matthew. Stay dry. Be safe. <laughs> right. McDonald all over it. Oh my gosh. At one point, did he want our laser pointers to be charged? Yeah. I'm yeah. not sure what <laughs> he went through so many things that need to be charged. He also brings up a good point. You want to make sure you get all your supplies, but in this case, make sure you get your Pepsi and your Coke. So right. you have Whoa. choice. Cases. Yeah, case you're getting cases. So like, <laughs> you know how sometimes you're like, you kind of in a mood for a Pepsi, but you prefer a Coke? Now you could have either. He's thinking. Be prepared. Be prepared. Best of luck to you. <laughs> Pat in Florida. Hey there, guys. Uh, if Matthew wasn't bad enough this week, uh, now some news outlets are telling us this thing's going to loop around, combined with tropical, uh, tropical storm Nicole that's out there in the Atlantic, and hit us again next week. Yeah, I, I was uh, seeing that, but it, obviously you never really uh, you wrote, never really know. But you really got to pay attention to one of these things at a time. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I forget one week uh, this year. Maybe it's the Bucks uh, that's playing. Um, the uh Denver one week and then the following week the Panthers like they got a fu- they're playing a fucking Super Bowl yeah. in two weeks but you can't play both games you got to play them one at a time speaking of games um I was uh watching the ball game last night hell of a game pitchers duel everything that you want in a one game playoff but at the same time I had on veto snaps and saw him from being go from totally excited to totally devastated. You know, how you doing, buddy? You hey, okay? buddy. Hey, it's pal. Just, it's like it, everything was so great up until the ninth inning, and then my whole world came crashing down. Ninth inning, it's scoreless, and then a three-run homer. Look at these evacuees from Florida just oh walking gosh. around here. Welcome. Welcome. Be prepared. Have a Pepsi. Don't or get, Coke. Don't give away our Pepsis and Cokes. <laughs> I don't know how long this is We need last. both. Yeah. I want options. Now, the excitement was the excitement of the, and tension of the pitcher's duel, everything you wanted or didn't want. Because you would describe the game the night before saying, I hope I don't end up in this. And it literally was your game. Yeah. In the, in the seventh and eighth inning, I, when it was just... Every time we had runners in scoring position and they just got away out of it. Like, I don't know how it sounded on TV, but when Granderson made that catch in center field. Unbelievable catch. The crowd was crazy. One of my snaps was the foul pole shaking yeah. because the crowd was going so nuts that it was just, it It was exciting. It was tense. Can I tell you, my ottoman was shaking at my house because I was kicking it. <laughs> and I, I literally screamed at this kid, get on your horse. <laughs> I scream as what help is that from my living room? I yell, get on your help. But that was almost like the Willie Mays catch in yeah. center field, which is considered the greatest catch of all time. And then he blasts, he just blasts face first into the center field wall. <laughs> Perfect. And then there were moments where 40,000 people were just silent because you, it was terrifying. Like every pitch, you didn't know if it was going to be a home run. You didn't know if the game was just going to be over right there. Because the first run, we, everybody knew the first run was going to win that game. Right. And 
Bumgarner's just a beast. Like, there's nobody He's like him. He's a beast. Him. Thor's a fucking beast. And both those angry men are just fucking chucking. Yeah. Chucking. Thor had 10 strikeouts. He had, uh, I think, in the first, like, four innings of the game or first, like, five or six, something, he had te- uh, 12 swinging strikeout, 12 swinging strikes, which was more in the entire season. Um, and it looks like his motion stinks, doesn't it? Like, it looks like he's taking a quarter step yeah. and just, and it's just impossible. <laughs> like, you see some guys that are just completely stretched out like a whip. He's not like that at all. Because he's one of those guys that's just so strong. That he doesn't have to have, like, he just uses his body power and body power. That's probably what it is. <laughs> body power. Well, he's, a, he's humongous. No, oh, I know. He's big and he's got a lot of body power. And then right? Bumgarner, the first three innings, it was like 21 pitches or something like that. I thought, I, I there was no doubt he was going to pitch a complete game, but it was, it was a pitcher's duel. I mean, pitch, I love pitching. It was a good game. It was a great game to be at. It, the end sucked, but it was fun to be there. Well, it's everything you want out of that game. I mean, it didn't come out this the way you wanted it to come out. And, uh, you know, once Thor left the game, it felt like it was, you know what I mean? Like, just when he's out of the game, you're like, no, they're going to jump on the next fucking dude. Keep familiar out of this. <laughs> yeah. It's, and he, dude has 51 saves this season, and now just two postseasons in a row, he's known for blowing everything. It's a choke, man. Yeah, look, you got to do it when we want you to do it. I don't give a shit what you do on June 10th. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything to me. This is worse. I'm happy with the Mets, though. I mean, the injuries we had this year, they should I understand, Jim Kelly. You got to be happy with what you got. <laughs> just burn all your gear. He's just the opposite of you. He hurt with his team, not lashed out. He sticks with them. It got dark by the end of those snaps last night. It really did. Yeah, it was ugly when you were saying it was like your dad died all over again. I saw that this morning, and I didn't like it very much. No. <laughs> it's funny, because I liked it a lot, and I was laughing. And I was like, it is! It's like his dad, his dad died again! When I, I woke up this morning to like a really big pity breakfast, and my mom going, <laughs> yeah, you walk in here just muttering really depressing things about baseball. Well, how, what was your big pity breakfast? Just carving it up this morning? <laughs> yeah, like I woke up, and they were just like eggs and bacon... <laughs> And she was like, you okay? And I was like, you yeah, okay, buddy? Good. She's Carmel like, you, were, you sounded awful last night. <laughs> He's just moaning himself to sleep. <laughs> I was just watching Modern just Family. Rocking. I watched Modern Family when I got home, and I was just trying to laugh. It's hard with the kids being so much older. Though. I know, it really is. <laughs> it's not that funny. It's really just mostly when awkward and uncomfortable. Manny is just this depressed, uh, obese young man. <laughs> It's not, it's not as cute anymore. No. And it's stalkerish and weird. Yeah. And he can't get girls and he can't win. He you know? With his aunt like two weeks ago. Yeah, that thing was really nuts. No one's comfortable with that. No. No. He's going to end up raping a family <laughs> member, I think. <laughs> the other sister's a whore. Just a fucking club whore. Yeah. The boy is fucking mentally challenged. Uh, Luke, his dumbness isn't funny anymore. He's like, he's a man who doesn't understand how life works. Now they're just putting all their eggs in one basket. They're just like, come on, baby Joe. Be funny, baby Joe. No, he, they don't have a chance with that kid. <laughs> they picked a real fucking dullard there. <laughs> and you know... Even, even Lily does I was just going to say, Lily's... T- I like... <laughs> I don't know. She hasn't picked up much <laughs> no. on acting. You know, some yeah. kids, they grow up in it. But you watch when she's not delivering a line. She's just like spacing <laughs> out and looking around. You kind of see her like looking at the... You can feel the suddenly the production staff. Right. Like she's just like, what's going on? What she's, are they doing? She's looking around to see why she doesn't have a childhood. <laughs> it's like Anthony Jr. in The Sopranos. When like in the later seasons, you were, yeah. like, you were like, oh, dude, you really didn't pick up this. Yeah, he was so cute as a little kid, too. <laughs> He was just a little butterball that was adorable. <laughs> and then later he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Ugh. Just do meth. You're just like, shut up. <laughs> you grew up, you fucking animal. Cut this guy's lines. Just keep, keep, keep him off the show. It's just a thing where he's in a coma. <laughs> <laughs> Still in the coma three seasons later. <laughs> they should just put all the children in comas as soon as they grow up. How's Anthony? Nah, he's all right. Don't worry about him. <laughs> His toe moves. He has a feeding tube. 
Well, rough night for you, buddy, but what are you going to do? That's baseball, right? Yeah. Chris Stanley, uh, the Giants are going on to play your Cubs. That's You're right. a little nervous. You got a lot of money on this. this I have, year. Uh, yeah, I have, I have hundreds and hundreds of dollars on this game with Hard Rock Johnny, and I'm not nervous at all. I know the Cubs are going to the World Series. They're going to win the World Series. Yeah, they're going to win the World Series. Because you're betting on winning the series. Yeah, yeah. This is going. This is going to the World Series and winning. If they don't do that, which they are going to do, I would owe Hard Rock Johnny money, but that's not going to happen. Love my cubbies. First of all, you've owed him money for over a year now. You just haven't paid, and you keep doubling down. <laughs> Something's got to hit, Ron. I don't think so. I don't think something has to hit at all. This never seems to work out for you. Uh, there's going to be a Clown Lives Matter march, uh, which seems to be really inappropriate. Yeah, that's uh, about as too soon as it gets. Like, I don't think... Are they doing it as a joke or okay. are they worried about being clowns? The premise is apparently serious, which they're saying with all the killer clown, scary stuff, they want to say... It's a march to say clowns are happy, they're fun, they're funny, they're not evil, but they named it Clown Lives Matter. Yeah, it's fucking really terrible. It's not a good idea. Stupid clowns. You are not, like, this is not going to improve likability in any way. First of all, they could hand out fucking coke and it wouldn't fucking <laughs> improve their likability. They're fucking clowns. Um, but. No one wants to see a clown army coming through their town. <laughs> no. That's what people are terrified. The evil clown thing is out everywhere. Yeah. I was watching people in North Jersey talking about it. And they're like, yeah, they're grabbing kids and taking kids. And I'm like, I know they're not. <laughs> Just someone puts on a clown mask, gets their picture taken. A and, doctor. <laughs> yeah. And then immediately, I mean, they're doing it to troll, but they're not literally grabbing kids no. and pulling them places. <laughs> This is the death knell of the clown. Like this whole like crazy. Why do we still have them? I don't know, but this is in the end. This will be a good thing because after this creepy clown fucking shenanigans, it's over for clowns. No one's going to want them anywhere. Yeah, but look how how people embrace zombies. Right? They love zombies. People love horrible, evil things. They love to watch it on TV. I don't know why somebody isn't racing to an evil clown fucking TV show. This thing would make big money. Yeah. There was an evil clown last season, like American Horror Story. It was huge. It was like a creepy evil clown. Why didn't they keep it going? I don't, they killed them that's, off. They kicked them off the show like halfway through the season. They didn't know what they had. But that, yeah, that's how American Horror Story is. They reboot every season is like a new storyline. And they just, a lot of times, use the same cast of characters. So that was like American Horror Story Circus. And then this year, it's, I don't know, something else. Uh, there's E-Rock in the hall. I think he's trying to keep Doug Benson off our show. Mm. He said, if I see that fucking guy, it's over. I don't even know why. Um, why aren't you guys doing an Evil Clown podcast? This Big Brother fucking podcast of yours is falling apart. Big Brother and the Holding Company. You can uh, find it on interrobang.com. Big HOH competition last night. What happened? Somebody win it? it was a, yeah, there was an endurance comp. And then Alex won. She cut a deal with Neely at the end. Neely, I don't you know, know who these people are. You Fun, should be listening to the podcast. Find out our opinion of not seeing what the where who votes for who on the next episode of Big Brother and the Holding Company. All right, let me uh, go over to um, iTunes and see the reviews. Okay. All right, you've got two reviews so Good. far. I want everyone subscribing and reviewing. Uh, one of these hosts touches children. <laughs> what? But I won't say which. Oh, my God. I think and, that might be Chris. <laughs> yeah, no. that's a good bet. Here's the next one. What do you get when you have a Gorilla Monsoon impersonator <laughs> and a recovering alcoholic cuck doing a podcast? <laughs> I thought the first one was going to be Chris, but it wasn't. Vito really takes the reins while Piss Stanley injects his <laughs> laughter while creeping in a corner. Good times and worth your time. I like the last part. The last part, I'm going to focus on the good here, and that's worth your time. How many stars? Oh, I'm not, I don't see the stars. Stars report. Five stars. I want people voting five stars, subscribing. It just seems like it's not working, and you ought to move over to Killer Clowns. <laughs> All right, both give five stars. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's good. All right. Um, the embarrassing thing, it took me that long to find out where the stars are. <laughs> Kids, get in here and help <laughs> Daddy find the stars. <laughs> I want to see how many stars my guys got. Oh my god, it's right there, Dad. Just... Oh, those are stars. Yeah, the right. star-shaped stuff. I see. I might have to change these bifocals out. 
What's that pi- picture of an ugly killer clown? This killer clown is from American Horror Story. Okay, well, that's fucking scary. It's scary yeah, shit. It's really scary. And he abducted children in the show. Yes, yeah, that's, that's what clowns do. I think he was kind of rapey, too. And then he also, at one point, you see how his mouth looks really weird? That's like a mask that lays over his face. And at one point, he took it off, and his face was all eaten away there. So it's just like this weird, like, gaping hole. Yeah, because it was like a suicide gone wrong. Suicide going wrong. He blew his bottom of his mouth off. So if a suicide goes right, it's still wrong, Chris. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Good point. Thank you. <laughs> Unsuccessful suicide. It's probably the better way to describe, describe this clown's predicament. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen Madigan put out this picture of a guy taking pictures of the people telling you to evacuate. It's just the fucking dude standing on the beach <laughs> doing the evacuation thing and he's not leaving. And he's just <laughs> taking pictures like, this is fucking great. My cousin just texted me saying she's still calling friends who did not evacuate. Wow. And saying, it's really serious now, guys. You need to get out of there. So she still knows some people who are going to s- stick it out. Yeah, people don't evacuate and then later and was like those people are trapped down there where's obama and you're like we fucking told him yeah. in four days to get out remember this is the thing four years ago it was the jersey one that supposedly saved obama's presidency and when chris christie hugged obama on the beach obama says don't worry i'm gonna give you a bunch of money so chris christie just gives him a big hug and fucking ruined his career yeah. With Republicans. He couldn't overcome a hug that he gave to his own president for saying, I will help. He was sunk after that. And the Mormon fucking went underground during those last two weeks. He's like, I better not say anything. There's a storm one. There's some kind of thing that I... I'll look like an idiot asking people to vote for me if there's a storm. (laughs) Uh, Hey, uh, Chuck in Mass. Chuck. Remember that movie years ago, Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Yeah, I never watched it. I saw it. What'd you think? I saw it when I was very young, so I was disturbed. Highly disturbed. Like yeah, that? I think uh, they're trying to make that movie into a reality now. I, get, I mean, if you're going for a scary look, the vampire has been used up, the zombie has been used up, what are you going to do? Dress as Frankenstein? That doesn't seem like yeah. it fucking matters anymore. The mummy is off the fucking For years now. charts. It's yeah. sad to say. <laughs> yeah, like but zombie, no one cares about the mummy. Zombie we're just used to at this point. Yeah. Vampire's sexy. That's like usually someone's like, ooh, a sexy costume. Vampire. Yeah. And mummy's just ridiculed. I mean, nobody's afraid of a mummy. Well, first of all, they're Egyptian. They move slow and they're bandaged. Yeah. They're only in one place. They're only in a pyramid. That's it. So, so they get out of the pyramid. One. That's the problem. <laughs> but even around the pyramid, they move so slow. You're, if you're unless you're by some tombs, you're fine. What? Zombies can be anywhere. <laughs> Vampires anywhere. Don't get in the tomb. Get your Coca Cola, oh. Pepsi. <laughs> Do not get in the tomb. Maybe you're not familiar with a little something called Tomb Raider, my friend. Tomb Raider. Uh, here's a great video, and it's. Uh, Donald Trump, and even if you do not like him and you don't want to vote for him, uh, you can't admit that he doesn't do a lot of funny stuff. So, uh, and, and by the way, the NFL was great with this. I think one of the websites, one of the football websites, went out and talked to all the football players in the NFL. Who are you voting for? 100% of white players saying they're voting for Trump. No. 92% of black players said they're voting for Hillary. 100%. 100. 100%. Every single kicker is a Trump guy. And every quarterback, just about. <laughs> and most tight ends. They got special teams. Yeah, the tight ends are really white. Oh, yeah, very. So, this is Trump last night. So, uh... How do you pronounce the state that Las Vegas is in? Nevada. Nevada. You say Nevada? Nevada. Chris, you say Nevada. What do you say? I say Nevada. Right. The local people say Nevada. And it's one of those things that local people lock into. I don't know whether you've ever traveled the the, uh, country 
But people get really mi- pissed off when you mispronounce things that they say yeah. locally. Like if you go to Newark, uh, New Jersey, it's and you say it's Newark, they get mad at you. Right. They say Newark, but when you're in Newark, Delaware, which is only like 100 miles away, it's just the opposite. Newark versus Newark. Yeah. I was in Albany, Georgia. I called it Albany, and everybody starts screaming at me, Albany. And they were really getting freaked out. And I'm like, look, (laughs) the way it's fucking spelled, folks, you're mispronouncing it. (laughs) So Trump gets to Nevada. Nevada. Nevada is the way they pronounce it, but this is what he's saying on stage. Heroin overdoses are surging and meth overdoses in Nevada. Nevada. (laughs) And you know what I said? You know what I said? I said when I came out here, I said, nobody says it the other way. It has to be Nevada. (laughs) Right? And if you don't say it correctly, and it didn't happen to me, but it happened to a friend of mine. He was killed. His own people who love everything that he says, they're trying to correct him. No. And will have no part of it. That's fucking classically funny. No. I don't in, give a shit what anyone says about the guy. Now, in his mind, does he think that they say it that way? Or he's sure that he's like, I'm telling you right now, it's Nevada. I don't give a fuck that you're saying it's Nevada. Or does he think he's playing to them and he's mispronouncing it? As a man who's never made a mistake in his life, he's explaining to people... <laughs> That some people mispronounce it the other way. And they're idiots. Friend of his did it. They killed him. <laughs> Nevada. He actually takes to the people. And goes crazy to say it. Like when you're, when you say, uh, New Orleans, right? People yeah. that, oh, it's, it's not New Orleans. It's, it's New Orleans. Orleans. I'm like, Louis Armstrong cut the fucking song. He didn't say, I wish I was back in New Orleans. <laughs> I think Louis Armstrong knows what the fuck he's talking about. It's on top of it. They get pissy with you, though. I heard some uh, tourist, and they were on their way to Houston Street. Right. And one of them said Houston. And then another person, who's also in this group of tourists, says, no, 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 they don't pronounce it that way. They pronounce it different. And they're like, how do you say it? And then they said, like, Hostin. And I'm like, no, come on. We're not crazy people. We don't call it Hostin. Hostin <laughs> now, there's another thing, like, if you watch a movie, people say, Joycey. He lives over in Joycey. And yet I've never heard anyone in New Jersey or New York say Joycey. Joycey, yeah. No, I live yeah, in you watch, And watch a, a, a fucking TV, they'll, they'll go like this. Hey, it's Joycey, right? <laughs> Joycey over here. But I've never heard anyone actually say Joycey. No. Why would they? It's made up. That's from a different time period, maybe. Ma- maybe everyone who said that is dead. <laughs> yeah. That's like that old timey New York accent that doesn't really that, exist anymore. Well, Joycey, you know, you go over Joycey. <laughs> no. No one fucking goes to Joycey. Here's a guy from Joycey. Hot Rag Jaddy. Hot Rag Joycey. <laughs> Joycey. Joycey. I've never referred to the place I live as Joycey. Ever. <laughs> Not once. But you've seen it on TV, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, even our biggest spokesperson, Bruce Springsteen, he just called it the swamps of Jersey, not the swamps of Joycey. He should be your biggest spokesperson. <laughs> have you read the yeah. book yet? No, I don't. I, I have a hard time with the book to you know that read? he how, how well, <laughs> aside from that point that I can't read, um, I just I, I, I just find it hard when someone who's so successful has to battle depression. And, and I understand it's a disease. I get it. I just find it, it seems hard. Like you like, don't get it. Mm mm. I do, I do, and I don't. So I, I may read it eventually. I'm not a big reader. I'm just not very good at it. Do you read like this? Bruce, 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 and, and, I can't do it! Stay with it, Johnny. Come on. Sound it out. Ash Burby! Ash Burry! Ash and Burry! I can't do it! I just want to go back to the hard rock. <laughs> and they ask him, like, do you want to, uh, here's a menu, Johnny. He goes, I'll just have the regular. 
Because he can't read. Oh, oh so that used sad. to, you know, that brings back painful memories, actually, of my my grandfather from Italy who just would say, I'll have what they're having constantly. When we, when we would go out to dinner, he would never. All right, I don't wait. Know. Are you trying to can... say that your grandfather is the old lady and <laughs> Harry met Sally? <laughs> well, kind of. Was someone pretending to come? Is that what was happening? No, no, no. This was a long came. time ago. That didn't John. happen. And... Johnny came at the fucking table and his grandfather said, I'll have uh, what he's having. Hey, look at the bridge. Me and my people made that bridge. I make everything really nice for you. <laughs> Damn it, I walked right into that one. Johnny, was were you scared when you were out with your grandfather and his bodyguard got up to go to the bathroom and you noticed he was unprotected? No, they'd, they'd frisk him again. They always get the double frisk. They never worried. Someone coming back from the bathroom with they're only gonna have their dick in their hand. Now this is fucking uh this is Johnny to me last night. This is how fucking crazy <laughs> it is. He's texting me about this big party he's at. It was and a he's, charity dinner. It was, and, it was and he's great. saying to me, Sam Cook is here. Yeah, and I go, I, I may What year is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sam Cook is at your fucking party. 1964? Have, he's been dead for 50 years. I may have replaced Sam Moore with Sam Cook at some point in my conversation. <laughs> Moore, a little bit better. <laughs> Sam Moore, yes, at 81 years old, singing Soul Man was a treat. What was this uh, charity event? Pink shirts? The pink shirt thing that you? <laughs> no, this to? was not pink. This was not affiliated with me being pink this month. You this love was charity. Uh, yeah, he does. Uh, this was a uh, for an organization called Little Kids Rock. It's a very nice organization. Ugh. Donated a hundred. They've donated over five hundred thousand musical <laughs> instrument instruments musical instruments to schools throughout the United States. Here's an old drum, all right? Hey, kids, look who it is. It's Sam Cooke, back from the dead. <laughs> Zombie Sam Cooke. <laughs> well, he wasn't dressed as a clown. Oh, Johnny. <laughs> yes, I may have, may now, have What other big stars were there with you last night? When the stars Tracy Morgan. Out? Tracy Morgan, who actually was uh, in tears on stage as he was introducing... Um, Smokey Robinson, who won an award, he was like, this man is my hero, and started talking, he, and Tracy Morgan broke out into tears. It was very emotional. Yeah, I don't blame him for that. Smokey's unbelievable. And, uh, and Kenny Loggins, who admitted on stage that he ripped off Footloose from Devil with a Blue Dress on. <laughs> <laughs> well, pay for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> now pay for That's it. what he said. He goes, don't tell anybody, because then I'll have to pay him. <laughs> The thing is, what he did is he took took a great song and gave it worse lyrics. <laughs> Footloose. What a fucking ridiculous thing. No dancers also. You know what? The reason why I'm a great dancer is that I'm kind of footloose. That's my thing. Are you fancy free? Uh, I don't. Uh, I never understood that song. But Johnny, I'm glad that the the pink organization has given out so many drums to kids. No, that wasn't it's really it's great. Separate organizations. Yeah. But you're I'm doing very great. charitable. This I'm charitable this month. Seems like you, you're guilty that you have to run around and do all these things. You did something. God, I can't wrong. read. He he once hit a man with a car because he didn't <laughs> understand the stop sign. Hey, there's uh, Hayden. What's his name? Hayden Church. Thomas Hayden Church. Yeah, just walked by. Oh wow. Yeah. But I think he's trying to get the show Wings back together. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Johnny. Talk to you later, buddy. Later, Benningtons. Uh, I'm in a little bit of uh, a trouble. I uh, invested in a restaurant chain, uh, Dave and Ghostbusters, and it's not doing the kind of business that we wanted it to do. And we're getting sued by Dave and Busters. That's bad. And Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah, Ghostbusters is also suing us. And also, we don't have any food or games. What is it, then? We thought people would just like to go in there, have a few drinks. <laughs> I got a rubber ball that you can throw against the wall while you're sitting. And you're just... Oh, that actually sounds fun. Seriously, why wouldn't fucking Ghostbusters have come up with the idea for Dave and Ghostbusters? I know. A merger, perhaps. Why not? Let's all get our fucking beaks wet. That's what I say. <laughs> Except for you people in Florida, please head for no. drier, higher land. Dry beaks. Yeah. For you. I wish Loggins would make up with Messina. What's going on with those two fuckers? They hate each other. 
hate each other's guts. Yeah. From what I understand, if you do Loggins' this show, you can't do Messinas. I didn't know that. Yeah. Those are the rules now. That's serious. It's a new world we're living Sirius in. Serious XM, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Here's our girlfriend we haven't talked to in forever. Janice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Janice. Yeah. Oh, my friend. Hey, sweetie. Should I be concerned that Chris is picking the Cubs? <laughs> Honey, you should be suicidal about it. <laughs> Janice, me and you, together, there's nothing to worry about. They're going to the World okay. Series, they're going to win. We're going, we're going to bring this championship to Chicago. <laughs> I, me I and just, you. I if seem you to remember a sweet ladies record. team. <laughs> Lock it up. They're go- I'm, I'm going to get even with Johnny. I'm not going to owe him a goddamn dime. After when the World did you Series. become a... Fucking such a Cubs fan because I remember and I'm not I'm not going to say everything because I find it distasteful. Okay. But he came up with a nickname for Wrigley Field. I don't even <laughs> want to tell you folks. Oh, it rhymed. That's all I'll say. Mean you. Chris. That was a good joke between us, Ron. Yeah, I wasn't laughing. <laughs> I'm glad you told us. I I'm glad I told too. It just really took a weight off my shoulders. I'm going to include that on my review on iTunes. <laughs> I've had. Oh. S- you know what? I had such a weight on my shoulders yesterday at the gym. And uh, I'm like, I can't come back here. I can't put up with the weight on my shoulders. It sucks. <laughs> it's the exact opposite of the way I want to feel. I want to fucking feel loose. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm back to the old gym where we throw around the medicine ball. That's pretty fun. Now we get the Indian clubs going. <laughs> Really in great shape here, I really huh? like old school gym yeah. stuff. I and just, then for ladies, that machine that just vibrates your waist. That's nice. And the steamer that you're up <laughs> under your neck. Oh, yeah. Steaming under here. It's like the thing that's just 90% coffin, right. but just your head is sticking out. Do me a favor, scratch my nose for me and pick it a little bit. Just pick the inside of it. How's this melt away? What's uh, melt away? How's Chicago feeling right now about the Cubs? It's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yay! (laughs) The thing about the Chicago Cubs, I think it's the only team named after a baby animal. (laughs) It's adorable. (laughs) It's really a cute choice. You don't have, like, the Carolina kittens. (laughs) (laughs) We're playing the puppies next week. This should be easy. Just a little cub, like a little sweet cub. (laughs) I know. It's so cute. Yeah. The fawns. Yeah, the Cubs should have been in the last episode of the first Star Wars trilogy, where you just go to a planet and there's Cubs there. <laughs> well, you're playing the Giants, right? I believe so, yeah. yeah. I'm not, I don't follow baseball like my father-in-law does, but he was very happy when the Cardinals got knocked out. Oh, everybody in Chicago hates St. Louis and all their fucking good fortune over the years. <laughs> I mean, they are. I call them the National League Yankees, and I hope that catches on. I really do. They just had too much success, and I hate any anybody who refers to themselves as the best they're, fans of baseball. Yeah, they're, they're fans we're really blow. great fans. Oh, great! Are you fucking playing the game, you scumbags? All right, come on, Chris. Right. Scumbag <laughs> is a fucking used condom. Is that what you want to call someone? Yeah. The For a man who's raw dogged it as much as you have, I bet you never even slipped any fucking plastic over that. That fucking did them come in chode sizes. <laughs> I mean, I guess that makes your girlfriend the scumbag. Oh, that's fucked up. Oh, oh, oh. All right, sweetie. Talk when you were so- talking yeah. about fall the other day, yeah. don't you? I still love doing an exaggerated kick when I'm walking through leaves. Oh, you yeah. Know, you- oh, yeah, kicking leaves. It's it- fun. It's a very white activity. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and that fun white activity we had in children, when we, we'd put the big thing of leaves together and we'd jump into it until a stick went into our back really hard. <laughs> No longer fun. It's always good until someone starts crying. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sweetie. Talk to you soon. Peace. Okay. Gail told us this thing off the internet. I had never heard it before because I'm not online, but that only white people like autumn, and it's been stuck in my head ever since. Yes, that it is a stereotype that we enjoy the attire, the foods, and the activities that go along with fall. It's the best time of the year to me. Yeah. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Now, when I was a kid, I would have picked my first four 
seasons would have been summer, 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 and summer. But as you get older, you're like, I want to fucking hang around a pool all day. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm an adult. Yeah. I want to be nice and chilly. <laughs> I like a nice chill. Yesterday was perfect when we left here. Yeah. Like 58 degrees. It's fantastic. Blustery. I hate to say that because the people in Florida, you know, sure, they got their own problems. I don't want to. They're like, I hate this time of year. <laughs> Storms come and destroy our house. Here's Liz Sets Fire, who uh, is put plywood all over her house. Look at that. And then she just says, you know, what? I like it so much, I'm just going to keep it as a crack house. No, she doesn't say that. <laughs> but she wants to put hashtag Bennington on the plywood, which would be really helpful to us. <laughs> It's grill marketing. Cajun Jack says no one says Nolans. Yeah, they do. Um, Wordy Turdy said the eggs and killer clowns were what really upset me as a kid. Oh yeah, that's right. They kind of didn't they hatch out of eggs? I didn't something know something like that. I never watched that thing. I didn't care for it. Redbeard said, who has blown more people, BL or Hurricane Matthew? Oh, BL. <laughs> I mean, as of right now, yeah, BL. Tiff uh, Chipperson says, Chris Stanley is an abortion gone wrong. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I may not have been planned, but there was no abortion planned either. <laughs> what? That's not helping you. Really you would give the worst it, speeches ever. It really doesn't help. <laughs> it plans nothing. Mm -mm. Uh, hey, uh, Scott. Scott, what's up? Hey, guys. What's going on? Hey. So I was in Taiwan in Kaohsiung in the south of Taiwan in July. And uh, that was that super typhoon Nepertak. 180 mile an hour winds, and I didn't even know about it until like the day before. I was taking a high speed train down from from uh, Taipei, and they just don't they don't freak out the way we do here. I don't I don't understand, you know, where they have 75 mile, 80 mile an hour winds on this one, well, and they're just yeah, they don't value American life the way we do. <laughs> I mean, you can fucking go there, and there's a dead body in the river. And the kids are fucking throwing rocks at it. We value, yeah. you know, yeah. human life. Well, it was, it was, yeah, it was a trip. That was a, and they've had two, they've had two more typhoons, super typhoons since that one. And I mean, you just don't, you just don't hear about it like you. Yeah. I mean, those hear. people that they, they have those fucking giant wall of water come in. That would be terrifying to us. And, you know, they just wait until it rolls back in again and they're digging in the fucking, in the sand all over again, looking for oysters or whatever right. they fucking need. They just see it like a way of life. Yeah, they don't know. They don't know. It's just like saying, hey, zebras don't make a big deal out of lion attacks. You're right. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> they don't value zebra life the way we do. We're different. Well, I guess we're, I guess that makes us pussies that we want human beings to stay alive. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty lame. It's the pussification of America. When <laughs> Trump gets in here, we're not going to give a fuck if somebody catches on fire, gets blown up by a tornado. No more weather warnings. There's a <laughs> lot of fucking natu natural disasters that take place. You get these crazy fires. You get nutty earthquakes. Wacky fucking tornadoes. And all these shit-eating fucking hurricanes. Mudslides. Yeah, Those are fucked up. Yeah, mudslides yeah. are fucked up, Chris. Everyone agrees. Um, could you imagine, here, by this house, you're in fucking California, right at the bottom of that fucking, well, right now it looks like a hill, later it'll look like a mudslide. What's that? That's why I'm knocking $800 off of this. Doesn't seem like enough. Where do I sign? <laughs> <laughs> what would you rather do, be on the top of that fucking mudslide or the bottom? I'd rather be on the bottom, see it coming, because I'm dead other way. I can't suffocate. I don't want to be fucking part of yeah. that world of just mud all over me. I think it'll be quick. Probably knocked no. unconscious before you uh, suffocate to death. That's You're the fun. first person who ever thought that suffocation was a good thing. <laughs> unconscious suffocation. That's your choice of a way gagging. to go? Yeah. Your nostrils and mouth are still filled with mud. 
Yeah, you're still experiencing pain, even if you're not this conscious is of it. Why people give wacky reviews to your goddamn Big Brother podcast? Big Brother and the Holding Company. Yeah, yeah that one. They're calling you peds. <laughs> that is not true. Actually, they're pretty good to one of you guys. Pretty mean <laughs> to the other. <laughs> I'll just assume I won't look. I'll assume they're pretty nice to me. Me and Devito. I read it to you. I fucking pulled an audible for you and Johnny because neither one of you read. <laughs> Have you read the Springsteen book yet? No, I'm going to read it within the next three weeks because I started the SNL book a few weeks ago and I'm just finishing that. That thing should take you about four hours to read the SNL book. I, I can't put it down, but it's just I, I keep getting preoccupied with others. It's really good. I don't have baseball to preoccupy anymore. Mean. Why be mean? It's like a mean <laughs> older brother. Look, my team's still in it, Ron. I'm feeling good about myself. Too bad. Yeah, he's a everyone Mets fan. could feel good about themselves if they just change teams willy nilly all Thank the time. You. you just fucking switch. You bait and switch everything. <laughs> the Mets broke my heart last season. Yeah. Got, got that out of my got that fucking bad mojo out of my life. Look, if I was still a Mets fan, look, I'd be just as sad as Vito today. Well, you weren't last year. You'd burnt the stuff and quit. <laughs> yeah, well, I was sad up until I set the fire, and then that was like cathartic for me. Which is why I think you said a, said a quiet, tiny fire. That was the <laughs> dullest fucking fire in history. <laughs> well, he whispered over it. <laughs> Look, it was a lot of there was people looking at me from the house. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you, fuckers. Piece of shit. Fuck you. I'm fucking burning you now. You see that? You're burning in this dust pan. All right, the Florida governor just said this. If you're anywhere, on the east coast of Florida, you will lose power. That's fucking crazy. That's a guarantee. He said, go inland to a friend's house, and Airbnb is making rooms available for free. Oh. And then he ended with this. This is going to kill people. The governor of Florida is not fucking around. He's saying this is going to kill registered voters. You def you don't want to underplay. You got to go big. You got to go big or go home. Wearing your Navy hat. <laughs> it's a good look. Tomorrow he'll be dressed like a pirate. <laughs> the day of that, after that, he'll just dress as a Southern Belle. My oh my. He's guaranteeing loss of power for millions of people. On a night that he knows he's got Thursday night football. The Cardinals are playing. You think anyone stays? You think anyone still actually stays? Of course, after this? people always stay. Every, always. Happens every, every time. Every time you heard people, people stay. People, people are saying right now they'll stay. You saw it in Jersey last year, two or four years ago, where people are like, no, we're staying here. Some guy, uh, uh, I think it was a uh, mayor of um, St. Augustine, she was telling a guy, you got to get out. And he goes, I just got a new, all my power tools. So this guy got $50,000 worth of power tools. I'm not leaving them. She's saying, your stuff can be replaced. <laughs> your life can't. And then they said, I got to drop you. The governor just came out. The governor came out like he was fucking, he was in a submarine. It just fucking comes out of the water. <laughs> he pops out. Um, John in North Carolina has a spy report for us. Spy report. Spy report. Go hey, ahead, John. Uh, hey, man, this is a big one. Uh, Disney just announced at 5 o'clock they're closing the gates, and all day tomorrow they will be closed. It only happened one other time during 9-11. They do not close. Wow. Disney. And they closed after 9-11 because they were petrified that Disney was going to be a target. Sure. Wow, you're right. I guess they don't even normally do that for any of the hurricanes. Nothing. Yeah, they never close. Yeah. I've been on there on amazingly hot days, amazingly freezing cold days. They stay open. And they are closing for this one. This is serious. Now you know what's real. Heed no, the warning. I, I, I got that from the weather report. Mm -mm, no, I Disney. Need, I didn't need Disney to shut their gates. <laughs> they have to put a tarp over all their rides. I think we need to break here, guys. Uh, all kidding aside, if you're in Florida, you better listen to your governor. Get out. 
the worst thing that's going to happen is that you're going to end up sleeping in your car tonight, but you could end up saving your life. This is the Bennington Show. Let Bennington know how you feel. Call 844-ROCK-GOD on Raw Dog 99. Serious XM's Comedy Club. It's the Bennington Show. 844-ROCK-GOD, 844-ROCK-GOD. Two million people are going to be displaced in uh, anywhere from Central Florida all the way up to South Carolina as of now. I don't even know where the storm's going to go after that. But Sirius XM has just let us know they've teamed up with the Weather Channel as a public service to provide live coverage of the storm on Sirius Channel 184 and XM Channel 1. Updates on the storm can also be heard on Fox News. Headlines uh, 24-7, Sirius XM Channel 115. So um, if you're moving around in this storm... Uh, make sure that you're locked in to those channels. And I told the story from living in Florida one time. Uh, we were on the East Coast doing a little body surfing and uh, doing a, a little bit of time off we had. And then we went off running all the way up into the mountains of Georgia. What was that little town of Georgia? Helena. Helena, Georgia, Helena, which is Georgia. this fake German town in the middle of uh, of Georgia. And it's really adorable. But So we kind of made a vacation. Out of it, but in the meantime, like when you're an adult and you're like kids, like, hey, how would you like to go up, yeah. up to Georgia? But in the mind, back of your mind, thinking, are we all paid up on our insurance? Are we <laughs> up to date on all the things I should have thought about before? <laughs> and then we had to get you back in time for school and all yeah. that kind of thing. So, I mean, this is florida living and it doesn't happen every year and you don't take direct hits every year so you can get very very complacent about it yeah they get very comfortable because the tropical storm is just part of life there I right. mean, it storms hard through most of the summer you get like you know heavy winds and lightning and all that kind of stuff so when it comes around they're like yeah we deal with this all the time but this is this is something different yeah it's something different and you know uh i heard the governor talking today saying that, you know, the, you're going to raise like five feet over sea level. Most of that state is under sea level. Yeah. It's hard to believe. At most, you're sea level. That's that's having a, a home with a view Yeah, uh, when you're sea level. So uh, SiriusXM teamed up with the Weather Channel as public service, providing live coverage of the storm, Sirius Channel 184, XM Channel 1, and then also you can listen on Fox News headlines. That's Sirius XM Channel 115. But uh, it's basically West Palm all the way up right now into uh, South Carolina. All those beaches. So if you're in Savannah, Jacksonville, some people are saying that it could go into Daytona. I was talking to a friend of ours yesterday in Daytona who had every plan riding the storm out and then she also told took time to tell me that she thought everything about this big brother podcast was just the stupidest <laughs> most hilarious thing she had ever heard i think it's brilliant this is the season that you need the podcast because it's all access it's over the top i'm just telling you people are laughing at you instead of <laughs> well maybe they should listen and enjoy the podcast the funny i thought that i would be watching along but I really am only getting my updates from the podcast at this Thank point. You. And I don't even understand it. I don't know who these people are. I can't believe a human being's name is Cornbread. <laughs> it does sound made up. Now, here is a uh, a piece that and it goes to show you why you shouldn't go on Facebook Live when you're edgy. And this is a mother uh, who went on Facebook Live. And it takes forever to get into, Chris. So did you go and do you know where the it starts and all? I would say it was like even almost halfway. You might want to check it out from that point. So, a little before maybe halfway, but okay. she's a Christian mom and she takes the time. Uh, she's driving her children into school and they're listening to their local top 40 station. And she heard a rap song that made her cry. And she went home and looked up the lyrics and she wants to explain to the rest of us why this is a horrible thing. That went down. And according to her, she grew up in the 
late 90s when life was just sweet and oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Well, we didn't have any bad rap music. Then. No. I no. mean, it wasn't about anything bad. <laughs> no. It was still rip, rap, Every... rip, do I guess, at yeah. that point. <laughs> she also said, you know, that they had fun things like Britney Spears. And I'm like, a Britney, who they dressed up like she was 12. Yeah. And had her doing, you know... Rolling on her stomach. Grinding. <laughs> yeah. It's like role play, but she actually is that age. Yes. <laughs> it, <laughs> it isn't cosplay when you really could be wearing a uniform. It's cute when a 25 year old girl goes, Hey, I'll put on the high school uniform. To check me out. But I don't know when you're actually in. A Catholic girl's school uniform, you could say, oh, look, I'm going to act like a Catholic girl. Could like be, I'm though. naive, but, but horny. So well, let's listen to a little bit of, of this woman. Society is so messed up. Listen to the music. This is the second verse. Hit the corner, make a dollar flip, and split the dollars with my mama children. Folks need Porsches. Hoes need abortions. I'm sorry. It's okay. I just need y'all out my business. Never no problem playing no pitches. Never no problem spraying no witnesses. No face, no case. Been with the shit. Hopped out broad day, then emptied clips. This is where it gets really messed up. Hot, cut class. Because it wasn't about cash. So talking about cutting school. Mm. School wasn't no fun because I couldn't bring my gun. No win change gonna come like Obama would say. But they shooting every day round my mama in them way. So we put an AK where Kanye and them stay, and that's for any nigga say he got a problem with me. Now I'm crippin' where I'm livin', come and follow me, pistol poppin' Poppy Street. Then it goes back to the main chorus. I ain't never ran from nothing but the police for the see the skinny carry strong he Nate Dog still here. Nate, Nate dog still here cause a nigga's like me. Police still, still scared cause a nigga's like me. Really? In the hood like a dollar sweet tea or a losing <laughs> burger. You ain't with the business nigga who you murdered. You ain't heard of cold chain, best thing, smoking out the city, riding round with some shotgun that shot Ricky. Little nigga should zigzag. <laughs> then he got his back wet. Now he running nerf side. Niggas better fact check. Fronting with the gun talk. I ain't heard a clap yet. All my niggas from a street. They a nigga best yet. Set for little halftime. Brody banging. Five blocks. Sorry I hit your homie five times. Better grab chalk. This is on our music. <laughs> this is on our radio station that our kids are listening to. I am so upset. This is ridiculous. Did it? Got away with it. <laughs> Out the Civic, we crippin'. Long Beach, pay a visit. Park Romano, pop blocked a corner. Give hell till it's frozen over. I ain't never ran from nothing. I ain't never ran from nothing but the police from the city where the skinny carry strong heat. North side, Long Beach, north side, Long Beach. That was on our top hits radio station. Yes, the cuss words were bleeped out, but did you just hear that? My daughter will never listen to that radio station again, ever. I am shaking. I cannot believe that filth is on there. Parents, I strongly encourage you to listen to what your kids are listening to. I cannot believe that was on our local radio station. Top hits. Top hits. <laughs> I just don't even understand. Why they think that's okay. You know, we, and I'm not bashing the DJs there or sure. whatever. All right, let's stop it there. But So that's up on World Star. 
And immediately, if you go to the next clip there, Chris, this appears on World Star Hip Hop. So bear with me. It says, Bitch, you thirsty. Please grab a Sprite. My crypt's lurking. Don't die tonight. I just want to dance with you, baby. Just don't move too fast. I'm too crazy. Man down, down the ass, and get shaded. <laughs> Take a nigga mind off that. We can dip, fuck in the wit, slide right back in. Function. One wrong word, start busting. Put that on my Yankee hat. I'm a gangster crit. Fuck gangster rap. Where the ladies at? Where the hoes? Where the bitches? Every real nigga know the difference. Bandana brown, like the dope daddy. Shooting in the kitchen. Nerf side nigga. Never went to Polly, Wilson, or Cabrilla. Cocaine color of acrylo. I don't even know if I pronounced that right. T scrap moving for the D, D lo. What he know? I ain't never ran from nothing but the police. From the city where the skinny carries strong heat. Nerf side, Long Beach, Nerf side, Long Beach. So let's just encourage kids to run from the police because that's okay, right? We wonder why this society is so messed up. Listen to the music. This is the second verse. <laughs> It is so good. Uh, it was very funny. And what you got to do too is like, I know everyone bitches about commenters on everything, but World Star Media is like, somebody give this bitch a contract. <laughs> <laughs> you know she's shaking that white um, dishboard ass to this, and it's just fucking one hilarious thing after another. This is just, I want to fuck this real ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it goes on for like fourteen thousand comments. <laughs> <laughs> and one is funnier than the next. There's just something so comical about the fact that she's worked up to the point of tears. And I think we could all agree. You've probably heard some offensive rap lyrics. This is not, this is pretty tame considering yeah. some of this shit I've heard before. This is so tame, but it's offensive enough to her. But her kids are in the back playing. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's like, yeah, they bleeped out the curse words, but you're not. <laughs> She's saying and she, she only pointed out like running from the cops and uh, skipping school. Yeah, those and, were the two things that really bothered that, her. And like she, her voice broke a little when she talked about getting abortions yeah. or something. Not yeah. spraying people in the face <laughs> until they're dead. I, I don't know if she even understood all that. No, some of the stuff she didn't pick up on. But she really doesn't like the truancy aspect. <laughs> uh, TR sent that to us and he just, I mean, he's all over World Star. <laughs> I mean, there is the, the most ridiculous shit. That shows up on World Star. That is a million times easier to stomach than the fist fights. Oh that yeah, they show you know. <laughs> I would much prefer this. Yeah, me too. Before seeing people beating the hell out of each other in a Denny's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, but there is a type of mental illness that happens when we have children that we suddenly, instead of like wanting to be, we we want to kind of baby proof the planet earth yeah you know and you just want everyone to realize that you have a child yeah you, everyone's like hey everyone else has had kids or been a kid you know why are you so freaked out yeah it's very similar to that thing where you know we've talked about this before where somebody walks into a restaurant or even a bar and you're like oh i have a baby now so everything changes oh. it's literally that but with culture with education with with anything that happens in life. Yeah, anything. If there's, a, if there's a child involved. Think about all the stuff that is the hardest pill for people to swallow that takes time for the country to catch up with change. The first thing people want to say is, what about the children? What will the children think about gay marriage? Or what will the well, children think about what trans is? Uh, there, but it also people remember their own childhood. Like we said, she was in the early 90s. She's not fucking bringing up Marilyn Manson. You know what I mean? Right. Like yeah. either she didn't think it was a big idea or she wasn't exposed to it. But uh, everyone always remembers their childhood as being like this time of sweet peace. Yeah. Because they're only seeing through their little children eyes. Uh, Glenn Beck did a... Um, it was a show or something, uh, a one night show or something. I think it was called My Shitty Christmas Sweater or something. My Christmas Sweater. But he was like, uh, when I was a kid, and I'm like, you were a kid in the 1960s, Glenn. Fucking, they killed Kennedy Brothers. They killed Martin Luther King. They were pulling kids 
basically straight from high school into Vietnam and shooting their ass off. But you remember it as peaceful because you were a little kid. Right. But that was a that was a rougher world. Now, people were saying this is the worst election we've ever had. The 1968 election, an actual full time racist was running and won a bunch of states as a third party. Like people were like, yes, is there any way we can keep blacks out of our drugstores? Uh, I don't want to go to go pick up Excedrin and there's a black person there. And having people agree yeah. with them. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like, literally, I think I'll vote for them. people okay. agreed. Um, but you don't think of it that way because you, when you were a little kid, you think everything is sweet. Right. Because you're living in a fucking stupid lie. Yeah, she's your, thinking your kids like, are fine. Yeah, she the the first of all the the very specific thing that she's talking about, like gangster rap, like that transition happened in the nineties when eighties rap became yeah, gangster yeah. rap. That happened in the nineties, right? And you existed through it, and somehow you were still able to grow up to have these very strong morals and principles that you do today. It didn't fuck you up. You're fine. You're still gonna just be whatever crazy thing you want to be. Yeah. There's always weird shit that happens on the outside of the way that you're raising your kids. It's just life. Stop acting like we all. Al Gore's wife started that shit in the 80s. Yeah. And I don't even think it was rap yet. I think it was like Prince yeah, lyrics. Yeah, she was and, like really upset about Darling Nikki, I think. Specifically Darling Nikki, she was like. Which, you know, is a. a is very deep on that playlist for that album. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a top 40 yeah. yet. <laughs> no. Anybody who starts to say their favorite songs off of that, it's a while before you get to Darling Nikki. <laughs> great song, though. Well, sure. Absolutely, but it's a great album. Um, here is uh, here's Dan in Colorado. Dan, what's up, buddy? Yeah, I, I had an incident with my mom. Uh, came into the room. When I was listening to Violent Femmes, you know, Kiss Off came on, and why can't I get one through? Yeah. And she came flying in the room, man. She couldn't get that CD out of the disc drive fast enough. I mean, she took the scissors to it and everything. She, you know, I could have, I probably was <laughs> 10 years old. Uh, but was, uh, yeah, but pretty you know what? Yeah, that is literally, that's literally her job, and I get it. And you want to play music that your parents are weirded out by. I mean, there, there's uh, the whole you don't get my culture is what every 15-year-old kid wants yeah. to say. That's like your first rebellion. It's when you try to stop it for everyone else. That's oh, nuts. yeah. I mean, nothing's what Well, like, yeah, if if you don't have that, then you just end up with a parent who's just like, I'm one of the cool moms. And right. that's the worst thing to that's have. That's the worst thing you could ever have. <laughs> In my day, it was bug music. <laughs> <laughs> but this is cool. I'm into what you're into. Don't be. <laughs> like, I don't want you to be. Let's twerk. <laughs> <laughs> Stop twerking in front of my friends, mom. We could be the first mother-daughter twerk team. That's disgusting. <laughs> What do they call it? Ass to ass? You want to do ass to you ass? You don't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Marshall, what's happening? Oh, so did you just catch me laughing yeah. my ass off? Yeah, you're um, laughing, laughing like a child. It's ass to ass. Oh, um, okay. Oh, geez, I've totally lost it. Oh. Oh, one time my mom walked in when I was listening to Slip It In by Black Flag. <laughs> and it's about fucking, right? Clearly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, she starts just yelling at me about being a sexist, and I'm like, what the fuck? That's what all music's about anyway. <laughs> but I wanted to say, um, hip-hop has gotten shitty, man. Okay, I'm old, but we used to have Public Enemy. We used to have uh, Boogie Down Productions. We used to have thoughtful stuff, and now it's all just all slang and crack to my niggas. And, so, and I hate I hate it. Yeah, I can, uh, but again, like we said, you're supposed to move on. Yeah, it is part of life. And at the time, uh, when Public Enemy and NWA came out, it was the first time that like some normal people went, "Uh oh, is this you know, it's a fucking revolution coming." <laughs> like people were literally afraid of those bands. And look how quickly before the corporate world yeah. got back on top of that again. And yeah, and and that was another thing is like I think part of that terror is any time that they think we're we're losing our white youth too. <laughs> like they're yes. like that, and the young people are following them. But believe me, they did that during the jazz age. Yeah, like of they were petrified in the nineteen twenties 
that kids were doing the fucking Charleston to jungle music. They yeah. were petrified. And blues, R and B, rock and roll, soul, uh, and then finally hip hop. Anything that had sex to it, sex, you know, sex and energy. You don't want to see the kids fucking like, yeah, you know, like, hey, (laughs) calm down, guys. They're studying to do. It's like they're humping on the dance floor. (laughs) You do not want to see the kids fired up and letting go. That's a normal thing. And it's because kids are fucking dangerous. We know this. The Khmer Rouge was all little kids. You look at those African revolution. The first thing they do is give fucking guns, machine guns to 12 and 13 year olds because they'll fucking use it without thinking. So, yeah, there's a lot to be afraid of with music. Of course, that's that's the whole path, though. That's the fucking deal that you sign up for. You've moved on past that age where you want to be like, fuck, let's break shit. You're like, hey, let's not break so much stuff. OK, but on my local station. Top 40? <laughs> I like when she uh, emphasized local. 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 <laughs> I mean, these are local <laughs> DJs playing this. <laughs> well, they're forced into a pl- playlist. And most of it is just fucking voiceover. They're not even there. <laughs> but that means anything to you. You have paid more attention to the lyrics of these songs than the programmers. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't know. I mean, the chances are pretty strong that your kids in another 10 years are going to be sucking dick down at Long Beach because that's where you live. That's your fucking fault, not ours. (laughs) What would you rather have them in the LB dust? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Who was just saying some fucking bad shit about their fans? Somebody was saying that the Sublime fans are the fucking most disgusting. <laughs> and they compared them with someone fucking filthy. Well, like, here's the thing. I loved that band when I was a kid, but I'm not sure what their adult fan base looks like now. Like, I'm not really sure. They all look like Bradley. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> um, here is, uh, here's Greg in Vermont. Hello? Greg? Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, you reminded me about Tipper Gore. She, uh, she was responsible for putting, uh, for putting an explicit lyric sticker on one of Frank Zappa's instrumental albums. Yeah, well, those stickers really did a lot of good, didn't they? Now, now we, now you're fucking one, your children are one click away from anything at all they want to see, mm-hmm. including fake pictures of celebrities right. fucking stabbing themselves with dildos. And the current way to stop <laughs> kids from consuming things, either p- photos, lyrics that are explicit is, are you 18? Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what they've come up Confirmed. with. Confirmed. <laughs> Off you go. Give me your birth date and year. Easy. I think I can figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, there's a lot of 100-year-old men on this site right now. <laughs> we do very well in that demographic. <laughs> Today's date 100 years ago is very uh, common each day. There's always, you know, there's, there's this thing in the fucking society where when something goes wrong, whenever there's a shooting, you, you blame video games, movies, TV, comic books, music, and it's been true forever. And for all I know, there may be some truth to that. Yeah. No one has ever really sat down well, and say, why do we need to see so much violent shit? Yeah. And we do. We love a violent movie. I, when I was working at Rockstar, it was a constant conversation because Rockstar Games was all, you know, brought up in the media all the time as... You know, things like Grand Theft Auto being so violent. And so people there kind of, you know, obviously took the side of this is so stupid. How could you say that this is what causes violence? But you do have to look into this. Like if you think about that Westworld thing. So it's like we could have all these different outlets, violent movies, violent lyrics, violent video games. But we still seek them out. So we are we are interested in violence. It doesn't create it, but it is an outlet for it. You can't deny that it's an outlet for an interest that's there. It is something. I mean, look at sport. Uh, UFC is gladiators with, you know, some gloves, football. People love to see someone fucked up. 
it's it's in our DNA. So we could either say, hey, should we change this? Would it be better right. as a society that we outlaw some of this stuff? Or does this let off some steam? Right. So you watch this stuff and then you're not as likely to go out and be violent. Those things are worth discussing. Yeah. And we never actually fucking discuss them. Because maybe what it is is it's not across the board. Maybe for some people, yes, this is an outlet that they can uh, not do violence in the world and do terrible things to other people because they have a place to go to experience that blow off steam. But maybe there are people who are like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't tap into this before this, and now this gives me freedom to experience this you know what i mean like you don't really know it could be not black and white it could be something where you can't really pinpoint the way people are going to react to experiencing things that are are violent yeah i uh I, like i said it is worth people talking about and talking about a lot i know the amount of fictional murders that i've seen over the course of my lifetime has got to be into millions from being a little kid Watching cowboy or cops and robbers shit on TV, it just seemed as natural in as, as in the world to me when I was looking. It's interesting. It's like a movie has a kill count. Mm -hmm. It's like each person from the amount of stuff that you consume in your lifetime. Somebody who likes violent movies, you're gonna have a higher kill count than say somebody who's like, oh, I'm really uncomfortable watching that. Yeah, and some of these things are PG rated movies. Is Star Wars blew up a planet. No one seemed to be too upset about it. Like, you oh, know, shit. oh mm. boy, a whole planet blew up, huh? Fuck. Was there people on that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that has way more murders than, than let's say, Seven, which, of course, that movie, uh, that or Fight Club, are considered some of the most violent. But even in nonviolent movies, supposedly or PG rated movies, you still see uh, murder, kill deaths. Yeah. We like them. Um, hey, uh, here is um, here's Jason in Oklahoma. Hey, Bennington. Hey, man. Party. Um, you know, when State of the Compton came out, you know, we played the fucking shit out of it. I'm a metalhead, like, to the core. You know, I grew up on Zeppelin and Aerosmith. And, you know, I got to say that, like, current era rap, um, you know, Fear of a Black Planet by Public Enemy and Straight Outta they all had themes. And you can understand what the fuck they were saying, too. This new shit, you know, it's, I got, I mean, I just, there's no, there's no statement. It's all, I got the longest, thickest dick, and I fucking fling more fucking rocks than everybody else. There's, it's, it's not like there's anything new and revolutionary. It's just, you know, I'm so, you know, I'm so bad. I just, you know, I just think it's bullshit. I, mean, I, I well, see, I would go the opposite. I think they like to just talk about their American Express receipt. I think that they're constantly bragging about short money, and I mean, you could put a corporate fucking commercial to that. You know what I mean? That you keep purchasing, and I got diamonds, and I got the newest sneakers. It's nothing but plugging, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you look at that, and you can see that corporate America be like, "This is great. We're really uh, creating a lot of consumers." And yes, there's a violent aspect to it, but if you ask any of those guys, they'll be like, "Well, oh, the song is supposed to be funny." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, it's uh, again. Everybody thinks music from the certain era that they had was the best music. I get that completely. But if it was as great as you say, kids would be saying, would be rejecting the new music and going to the right. older music. They can find it. They've heard it. And you also have to know that when that's when you give that scene up, when you're no longer a young person or no longer interested, there's going to be shit that you don't know about. You know what I mean? Like what you're reacting to is maybe getting, you know, the top 40 kind of play. But even the best hip hop of the 90s was not top, you know, the top. Absolutely. Hits. And there's there's a there's an alternative hip hop scene 
that exist now that didn't exist before that they're rapping about far more interesting things right. and far weirder things. And why can't they get on the radio? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, is there something that keeps that kind of music off the radio? And the fans of alternative hip hop probably are comfortable with the fact that it's not on the radio because that's why they seek it out. They feel like they're on the outside of something. But what I'm saying is if there is more interesting stuff that isn't telling you to run up an American Express card as far as you can, you know what I mean? Uh, is there a commercial aspect that likes the kind of rap that goes out now where, you know, rock music doesn't have the fucking hammer that it has. And it really didn't basically throughout the lifetime of you could, you could make the case the grunge was, the fucking death rattle, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, of people making their own music. But look how quickly corporations took over that music, had more corporate bands singing more corporate shit. It was within a couple of years, mm -hmm. a couple of years. It's fucking hard to believe, and yet it happens every single time. It happened with early rock and roll. How quickly Elvis was taken over, yeah. and it became something way different. Now, and Elvis, you know, fell in line with it. And then you had the English invasion and that fucked them up for a minute and they turn it back uh, around again. So there's always more things to this. What Hollywood is selling back with these superhero movies, right? That everyone agrees. I mean, the people who make them. Ben Affleck was on TV today making fun of that kind of movie because he's got a, a movie coming out that he's really proud of at Christmas. But he's still making fucking Batman movies because he knows that's where the juice is. Yeah. That's why he'll get to do other shit. But it's not like he thinks they're great. He's on his fourth Batman movie now where he's playing Batman in a movie. Um, hey, uh, Ron, Strong Island. What's up, buddy? Hey, Ron. How are you today? Hey, what's going on? Not much. Uh, I wanted to bring up, I don't know um, if you recall, but... Um, on um, Penn and Tell is bullshit. You've seen it, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. They mentioned about, um, with the violent video games, which Gail was mentioning before, they actually had an episode on there where they were trying to um, talk about the correlation between um, whether playing violent video games would actually make people be more violent. And they had this, um, this kid, you know, he's probably a teenager, you know, young teenager, and they brought, you know, he put love playing like, you know, Call of Duty, these types of games, and then they bring him out to a shooting range and let him shoot a real machine gun. And the kid, at, the kid was scared so shitless by the end of it. And it was actually they had to like turn the camera away because they because of how horrified the kid was from shooting a actual real gun. So they were trying to, you know, I guess um, you know say that there wasn't as much of a correlation. They were. Well, it's a pretty good display of that. Yeah, I mean, and you come up with a good point. Is like Penn and Teller would raise different things, looking for contrarian beliefs. Uh, Penn actually explained that he'd like to go back and do an episode about all the times they were wrong too. Uh, but it was one of the few times that you saw anybody doing it. One of the things that Penn always says is you you got to let art be art. You know what I mean? And and these rap lyrics and these video games are a reflection of your times, whether you like it or not. You know, the corporate culture itself is a reflection of the times, whether you like it or not. It's not nearly as dangerous as we sometimes believe, but it may have, and I can't prove this, but it may have cost us empathy. I think that's the most dangerous part of this is that can you, watch something take place that's horrible and block it off yeah. and go either for the joke or fuck those people. They're poor and stupid. And I think we go through that a lot now. I think a lot of what goes on with the Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, is people find it impossible to find empathy for people who think differently than them. Like, we look at this woman today, and we kind of laugh at her. But she's definitely a woman in distress. Yeah. She's definitely a woman afraid for what is going to happen with her children. That's a natural fucking fear, even if everything's going great. Right. You look for things that aren't. And before you know it, people are worried about lightning. 
You know what I mean? I know when I was younger, no one worried about kids riding around on bicycles. I had kids on my block die riding bicycles. And no one put on a helmet or said, this is the bike riding zone. It was after people start to study it and look into it more. A kid who was fucking wearing a helmet when I was younger, he would have been pulled off the bike by other kids. He would have been yanked down off the bike. It would have been the most dangerous thing you could have done is put a helmet on a fucking kid in my neighborhood. <laughs> they were always looking for anything different. <laughs> then it could be better. And they'd still go after it. They just didn't like anything different. <laughs> Talk about little conservatives. Um, 866-ROCK-GOD, 866-ROCK-GOD. It's the Bennington Show. Reminding people that SiriusXM has teamed up with the Weather Channel as a public service to provide live coverage of the storm on Sirius Channel 184 and XM Channel uh, one, you can also uh, tune in to Fox News headlines 24-7, Sirius XM channel 115. This is a serious, serious storm heading into Florida. Uh, the governor down there is uh, almost terrified at this point. So pay attention to the warnings. Um, hey, Ray, Ray in West Point, how are you? Uh, I'm doing good, Ron. How are you? Cool, man. What can we do for you? Uh, um, first off, I want to say to Vito, I am sorry about the Mets. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Mets. So it was a great but, game, um, though. It was a gr- actually great end of the season for the Mets. I mean, everybody who's uh, a Mets fan would have w- was shocked that they were even there. It was an amazing game, pitch for pitch, pound for pound. Yeah. But um, like um, about the video, like I know nowadays, like rap music, I mean, people are kind of mad because it's it's a new new like style of rap music because they just call it, like mumble rap, but it's something new. Some people like it. I don't like it. Okay, I can't fucking understand it. But it's just like a new new like um like I don't know how 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 do how do like explain it, but it's like a new like trend. Just yeah. like um, techno music and everything. Yeah, every couple of years, and old school hip hop guys are embarrassed about the new music in the same way that soul guys were embarrassed about their kids listening to hip hop. Right. There isn't, look, the Beatles have lasted 50 fucking years with people still listening to their music daily. But it also sounds dated. You know what I mean? It also sounds like it's of a time and place. I never was a hip hop guy at any time, but I'd gladly run the hip hop before electronic dance music. <laughs> and I'm probably 100% wrong. You know what I mean? I am a person of my time and place. A lot of times when I see people saying, oh, they like this music, you know, I'm like, well, what drug am I missing out on? Yeah. That I'm not electronic dance it's music. Molly. Kind of makes me a little curious. Like, no, it's who not knows? that fun. It's not that fun. Um, here is Ted in Providence. Ted. Hey, buddies. Yeah. So I always wonder why music is like the only art form that people assume is real. Like, people, like, this woman isn't getting up in arms about SVU where there's just like, you know, uh, child rapists beheading people left and right. But like, Music, like you said, Marilyn Manson earlier, like people actually thought, oh, this guy is sacrificing kittens on stage and he had his ribs that removed so he could suck his own dick. Like they actually think it's real. I think there's really something upset. more personal about singing a lyric or rapping a lyric than it is about a movie. But I will also say this. People have gotten an attack Quentin Tarantino all the time. And I met him and seen him in other stuff. And away from the kind of films that he he makes, he seems to be somewhat of a gentle soul. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think he has ever done any gangster shit in his <laughs> life, but he likes telling his stories through violence. Right. He sees it as paints to use. But when you meet him, you don't get the feeling that you're meeting a bad motherfucker you get the feeling that you're meeting a kind of a, a closer to an almost obsessive, geeky, nerdy guy like most artists tend to be. Yeah, and those types of personalities do delve into those worlds 
that are similar to the types of people who like fantasy or, you know, they like, uh, you know, period pieces like that is a world that they go into and then they're able to pull themselves out of it. But even the Stones, Jagger's singing about the Boston Strangler or the devil. They're not that way. Look at Ozzy. When you see Ozzy in that reality thing. He's kind of a bumbling guy yeah. who's who's like a history buff. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's not really the Dark Prince. He plays the Dark Prince the same way Christopher Lee did it in the movies. Right. Christopher Lee probably could have been a Shakespearean actor. <laughs> but uh, he found something that worked for him and off he went. You know, it was a way to tell stories. But the gentleman made a very good point. Most of the time, these guys are telling a story. About a badass not being one, yeah, because they're not singing this from a jail cell, right? <laughs> like country music or western music, where you're following a an outlaw. It's yes, similar to that. It's yeah. the idea or the fantasy of living that. Way. It's a metaphor for how you're telling the story. Uh, Neil, Michigan, what's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going? Hey. Good. Hey, um, yeah, I just wanted to speak on uh, hip hop in general. Um, I'm a member of a, a underground hip hop group, a political revolution and hip hop group called Conspiracy Camp, uh, spelled with K's because uh, we pay homage to the hometown Kalamazoo. But um, I think hip hop is alive and well. It's just this kind of underground. I think uh, the stuff you hear on the radio, um, as far as my knowledge goes, there's like six. Right, our guest labels. Doug Benson's here. I'm talking to a caller right now, and then I'll have Doug in. His band is called Conspiracy Camp, so you could look for them as while we're doing this. Yeah, um, but I think that as far as uh, the mainstream hip-hop goes, it's all under like six major labels, all owned by the same media conglomerate, and a lot of it is just corporatized. Um, and, you know, these ar- artists are getting 360 deals, which they get all this money up front, but then it's owed back to... Uh, to the label. You yeah, they're know, basically they, loaned money. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, and they're encouraged to promote the consumerism and the flashy lifestyle. It's uh, it's kind of a way to keep people in that mode. Well, I always have a lot of people tell me, oh, you got to go looking for the rock and you got to go looking for the hip hop. I'm like, I really don't have time. Somebody's right. got to get it for me. Which is kind of why a lot of music ends up being a youth game. Right. You know, it's like you have to have the passion of it. And then as you age out of whatever genre you're interested in or if you're just interested in music in general, you're like, well, where's the good shit? It's like because you no longer right. really have the know how right. to dig for it. <laughs> Yeah, I listen. I listen to some things. I listen Case. to uh, you know back in high school, and it's goofy. So <laughs> I think tastes change over time too. But uh, I think hip hop is alive and well underground. All right, Conspiracy Camp is your band. Uh, we're going to break right now. Uh, Doug Benson stopping by, uh, but this is his band, Conspiracy Camp. As we go to break, we'll be right back. Is Bennington. It's like a 140-character live journal. It's hashtag Bennington. Tweet it. Well, we're all happy because Doug Benson is here. Doug Loves Movies is happening at the Wilbur Theater in Boston this Saturday, October 8th. Doug Loves Movies returns to the Gramercy Theater in New York City, November 27th. Go to DougLovesMovies.com for tickets and additional dates. Good to see you, buddy. It's good to see all of you, and I just want to put it out there right now. Please don't make me ever choose between you. Well, if you... I always want to do radio with you guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you split up with your own daughter, right. I, uh, then I am uh, going to... Well, who would you I know? I don't want to have to choose. <laughs> who would you know that you would get immediately, Gail? Oh, my God. I don't know who. I feel like I would get Amy Miller. Easy. You got I mean, Amy Miller. That's okay. His crush right she's there. She's in the pocket. <laughs> yeah, she's in the pocket. I would say I would get Big J Okerson. Yeah. Yet I haven't been able to get him back in here anyway for a while. I have a feeling I'd get Louis J. Gomez. Oh, yes. He's yours. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big J's just super busy. Yeah. yeah. He still likes you. Yeah. Oh no, we're all we're all friends. But he's <laughs> traveling around and he's super successful now, and he's got his own radio show. The bonfire. Right. Crackle, crackle. 
Right. So, <laughs> so you know, do that. I don't even know if I want to pick him because it's like picking uh, Clowny. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> why have a guy on the injured reserve? But was that? I know the initial rumor was you had to choose between Opie and Jimmy, and the fact that those guys are not doing this real is so stupid because from a gossip point of view, the whole country would be talking. <laughs> You know, about who went where. <laughs> it would have been the perfect You're angle. always thinking about how to make these things bigger. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. with Opie Anthony talking on the phone. Yes. I heard you saying they blew it. Yes. But isn't the reason that happened because it just it came together too quick for them, either of them to say no? Yeah, and it was bad. Well, I, I blame Keith the cop. Because yeah. he's, you know, it, it was his job to turn this into a big deal. But you got to wrestling this thing up. You got to you got to make it for the audience. I mean, that's a main event for yeah. sure. By the way, when you brought up Amy Miller, I think she won the night that I did Doug Love's movies last time. Yeah. And that makes oh. me a little angry. Or did Gary Goldman win? I don't Miller remember won. who won. I, th- I think it was Miller. Gary took it so seriously that I could saw it, it, it was painful for him. Each <laughs> part of it, he just wants to win it. Yeah, people hate it when they come on and they're not total movie trivia nerds, and but they still want to win. Yeah, yeah. Or so it's like, like, why don't I know this? It's probably worse if you really think of yourself like, yeah, I know a lot about movies, and then you just choke. Right. Like, well, I don't, yeah, like, that I, happens a lot. For, for me, the best player was Esther Koo because she was so out there that it was fantastically funny. Right. I was <laughs> sitting on the stage, I had tears coming out of my eyes because she would just name a, a movie with <laughs> someone else in it and then argue that that is someone else was in that movie. You know, it was just amazing. <laughs> it's a really fun show, though, and, and your audience is far smarter than anyone on stage. Yeah, oh, that's what I always say when somebody's sitting there thinking of the answers. I'm like, the whole audience knows it, <laughs> yeah. dude. You're the only person here that's in the dark on this. And but, it's fun. But the rumor thing uh, with uh, Opie and Jim, like, I texted both of them and Sam Roberts uh-huh. uh, just because I knew I was going to be in town this week, and I'm not going to just sit out everything just because, just to give them time for the yeah. wounds to heal. And uh, I said, you know, uh, are you guys going to, do you want to do an exclusivity thing? Because I just kind of assume that they'd go down that road just if they're that upset with each other. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and Opie initially said, uh, I, I think I'd rather, you know, you wait a beat, you know, or down the road, I'll be more comfortable with it. So I thought, oh, the next time I come to town, I could do both shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, then when I said that to Jim, then Jim was like, well, then we're going to say, we're not going to, you can't do our show if you're, you know, I love then it that became though. that like, yeah. well, if he's going to say that, then I say that because yeah. Jim's initial reaction was, well, I don't care. You know, and it's almost like they cared just because I asked if I had just kept my mouth shut. (laughs) The subject might not have come up. Yeah. Yeah. But I just wanted to get it out there and (laughs) see where I was at with everybody because I like all of them still. And I'd I'd be happy to come sit here all day. That would be the thing is that you'll end up eating three Thanksgiving dinners. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Doesn't sound so bad. Yeah. I think that the people who have divorced parents are better able to handle this. I wish my parents had done that. Yeah. Yeah. It always seemed like uh, Christmas time, they got a larger quantity of presents. Like, I don't know if they really did, but it felt like they did. And I think that their dad took them to places that no still married dad would ever take his kids. Right, right. Like they were doing a lot of yeah. activities. You get less blowback from the wife. Right. On like taking him to an R rated movie or something. Yeah. Like instead of taking. Tell your mom. Right. Instead of uh, like going to miniature golf with my dad, I would be able to go along to the lumber yard where he filled up the back of the car. <laughs> 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 like I don't, we'd never like he said, yeah, jump in a car. But you're going to help me put this stuff in here. But he never felt like he had to impress me because he stayed home. But when you don't stay home, you've got to try to win your kid's approval. Right. And I never had to do that with you kids. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? I would just tell you on the weekends, quiet. I'm watching this movie. If you want to watch it with me, you can. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's as far as we went. Yeah, that was good. Um, but you know, we were talking about this the other day and maybe you'd have a good idea about it. And Gail was like, what kind of people make the best directors was the topic that came up. Cause I thought it was always interesting that you don't get people who are actually great film people like the cinematographers 
don't go on to become directors, but an actor will. Right. You know? So who makes the best best transition into director? Is it actor? Is it producer? Or is it writer? Whoa. That's a tough one there. I guess I, I guess writer because they're the most concerned about all the elements and uh, and if they wrote that particular screenplay, then yeah. they have passion for what they're doing. I would I would agree with that, but I don't think that they do because I think a director has to be a Type A personality. You don't think uh, that a writer? I don't think the work. that across the board. Usually, writers are not Type A personalities. It is interesting that somebody like uh, uh, Aaron Sorkin right. is just willing to just write it and then step back and let a, a filmmaker, you know, direct the, the material. It kind of makes more sense because what he should be doing is writing. Like he should <laughs> hand it over <laughs> yeah. and get, get back, back to, to your desk. <laughs> yeah. And what are you doing on set? Instead of spending the five years of all oh, casting it and writing it and editing it. Right. Just get back and write another yarn. Now, I when we talked to Adam Resnick, we talked about this because he had this the experience of, uh, you know, he was writing first, mm -hmm. and then they were like, because this is great, you should direct, and he felt like that was completely out of his wheelhouse. It was not, there was nothing that he had done that was going to prepare him it, it for is, making that transition. I have seen people direct before, and it looks impossible to me. It looks like you have to be awake 18, 19 hours a day, and you have to... If someone came up to me and I was already behind schedule and they're like, which blouse do you want her to wear? I'd fucking lose my mind. I yeah, go pick a, a lot, fucking it's blouse. questions all day long. Yeah. Somebody just willing to answer all the questions, delegate. Like that's where I think the best directors in some cases are just, just super chill people. Right. That are, uh, that can. Ron Howard. Yes. <laughs> exactly. The late Gary Marshall. Yes. Was a delight on his set. I'm sure he was just telling stories all day. Yeah. And, uh, the cameraman worried about the, right. where the camera was going to go. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, it's, uh, uh but there's, uh, there's all kinds of yeah. uh, directors. You know, there's the tyrants that just scream at everybody. And then there's people that like you barely know they're the director because I was I was lucky to be an extra in uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High a million mm -hmm. years ago. And uh, after being on the set all day, if somebody said, well, who's directing this movie? I couldn't have told you. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't have pointed it. That lady, Amy Heckerling, <laughs> who's just sitting around seeming like she was barely involved. But that's because she's just, a you know, she's just a quiet. You know, that's how she uh, right. operated. She didn't stand around yelling. Now, she was a writer, but didn't write that film, which is always interesting to me. Yeah. Cameron wrote the film, right? Or yeah. did she, did he only write the book? Uh, she might have adapted, but no, I think he wrote it. I think it. he yeah, straight he up has it. screenplay credit. I yeah. Think. So that's always interesting that you're a writer first, but then you start to direct other people's writing, which is kind of like being an editor, you know, for, yeah. for a novel. But look how many people don't really write. Like Scorsese doesn't really write, uh, even Spielberg, I think, was only got writing credit for a couple. What did he? What did I think he, he got writing credit on BFG. Um, I think. I, yeah. I don't know. But he wrote Close Encounters. And, and he wrote E.T. Uh, Melissa Matheson wrote E.T. So he didn't write E.T. at all? I don't think so. Wow. I bet you somebody could look this shit up. Well, we don't, we got other stuff to do. We got other stuff to do, right, Chris? No, nope, we're we don't need it up to, as... Seriously, we don't need to do that. We just have fun with it. But that is always amazing to me. But the fact is, like, because directors think so visually, most of them have clunky dialogue when they, like, Lucas wrote a lot of clunky dialogue because he, he doesn't think as in like, words. Even sometimes, not even clunky, but that just kind of like, placeholder like it kind of right. seems like somebody's like okay so we need to get from point a to b and then yeah. someone's like all right so let me just put these lines down to get me there and then they're like actually that's fine that's like we actually don't need it. You, <laughs> you know i don't think quentin tarantino will ever get enough credit for the opening scene of reservoir dogs when those guys were not talking about the crime at all yeah that they yeah. were sitting around talking about pop music and i remember sitting in the fucking theater going this is insane how did no one ever think of that because when you watched any gangster movie in history they were just talking about the crime and the police they never had any outside interest no one ever said hey who do you see the yankees got a new shortstop it never <laughs> happened 
And when you start talking about Madonna's big dick, forget about it. That was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, and then it, it, you know we got stuck with a lot of sh- shitty screenplays that have that sort of stuff in it, but uh, it seems to have evened out now. Like it's less people are le- doing that less. Yeah, <laughs> certainly. Uh, well, I you know even I I thought one of the most brilliant scenes. And I and I brought this up. It was in that weed uh, movie. Um, I'm trying to think of Pineapple Express. Pineapple Express, right? The last scene where they're in the diner. Good pull. Yeah, he he looked it up. Good job, you're on top <laughs> that of that weed album. movie. Yeah, <laughs> but that one had the thing of they were talking about what happened to each of them earlier in the movie. That and it, scene is when so he goes, insane. But you were in a car chase? <laughs> it was so it's fucking so funny. Good. <laughs> but no, most of those guys don't even get around going, I can't believe the day we've... Yesterday I got shot. Today I got knocked out. I met a nice girl. I think it's going to work out with her. <laughs> they never seem to ever go, this I'm like, is weird. And then all of them legitimately... Inter- like, that is what... I mean, yeah. yeah. That's nuts when you think of it. She's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it was just two days ago. You were tied up. We thought you were going to die. <laughs> um, Doug Benson is here, and hopefully you'll get to do all the shows, and everybody will. I think I'm out. good. I did one this morning. I'm doing the other one in the afternoon. I'm not going to name names, but right. you know what their slots are. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt like it was tense today with you and Jimmy. You did? What happened? No. No. He hit the uh, car crash button a lot, but that's just because he's got it back and he's excited about yeah, it. Yeah, he is very excited about the car crash button. Yeah, he's got car crash and bad car crash, or his two sound effects on his iPad. Now, will Opie not be using car crash? Is that, uh... I don't think so. I think it's been drafted by the okay. show. Okay. Uh, Doug loves movies. Yeah, they have to split up everything. <laughs> yes. Like, I'm definitely getting honk honk. Like, I want that one. That's a good one. Uh, Doug loves movies happening at the Wilbur Theater. Great theater. In Boston this Saturday, October 8th. You never like to say who your guests are. It's a big secret. And you get some fantastic people. Yeah. So either the audience either gets very excited when I bring somebody on that they, uh, you know, didn't necessarily expect. And they don't get too disappointed if I don't bring (laughs) anybody on. (laughs) You know, they trust my judgment for the most part. Uh, That is really. But also, I think I think it's a brilliant idea. Because you don't necessarily bring fans of those people who have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, if you announced Ben Affleck, you would get Ben Affleck fans, but they're going like, what is this show? Yeah. You know, I don't need a room full of Ben Affleck fans. <laughs> right. I, need, I need them to all jump on board when I announced that he was on it when we put it on right. iTunes. Yeah. You know, once it's out there, then I, that's when I want people to flock to it because it's got a, a celebrity of... Of, the, of a higher nature. Now, November 27th, you're at your real home away from home, the Gramercy Theater in oh. New York City. That is... Uh, the big Christmas show is the next day. I do a 12 guests of Christmas show where there's 12 guests and they're just viciously eliminated through trivia uh, throughout the show. And it's a lot, sometimes the people come and when they get eliminated early, they, they just didn't expect that to happen. Right. And so they get kind of, kind of mad at me. But I tell them ahead of time, hey, it's an elimination. So if you miss something, you're out. Now, do they have to leave? Yeah, they or... have to leave the stage. Because right. you don't need a comedian who just lost getting to stay and, uh, you know, contribute that, their nonsense. I got the perfect guess for you then, Judy Gold. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> there were still people talking about Judy Gold when I did your show. No, it's still to this day, she's, right? she's become the go-to, like, if if I have a guest on that people don't like, they go, but at least there was no Judy <laughs> Gold. <laughs> And I love Judy. I think she's so funny, but she just didn't get into the right, right. groove with that crowd that night. You have to flow with that crowd because I felt like I was thrown off a couple of times when we were chucking donuts yeah. into the thing. I forgot I was part of a game. I mean, I was out there. I yeah. was in it with the mob <laughs> out in the audience. I was like, what are they doing? Yeah. And then I forgot. Oh, yeah. We got to get back into a game. I was having fun throwing donuts for a while. Yeah. And the listeners are like, why am I listening? Yeah. To a bunch of people just throwing donuts at an audience. But uh, once they come to see it live, right. they'd be mad if we don't do the donuts. Yeah, you got to do the donut bit. <laughs> so you got to give them what, <laughs> what they've uh, come to well, expect. Yeah, that audience actually, uh, they remind Doug what's next all the time. People will yell out, no, he has to do this. Yeah. yeah. If I forget an element of the thing, somebody yells out. But sometimes they yell out and they're wrong. 
uh, and then and I really tear into him. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a risk. It's an interesting relationship because <laughs> I I like audience participation when I ask for it, you know. And sometimes uh, I don't get that option. Well, this is uh, and I told you before, and I'm not kidding about this. One of the great exciting things in my life is I've gotten a segment, and you play it pretty regularly. Now. Yeah, I, I, it's a great game. Yeah. But I, and people I, are suggesting games to me all the time. Yeah. And it's always just like, everybody guess who's got the, you know, what movie is the lowest Rotten Tomato score? And I don't care about that. Right. I don't care about their Rotten Tomato score. And they got the idea just because they heard your game. <laughs> right. Well, the initial <laughs> game you got. The from numbers the, that really matter. Yeah. Now, the initial, why I wanted to get one on is there's a, there's a show at Austin that got a great game on. Yeah, there's a, uh, a morning team, Jason and Deb and Austin. They uh, they they have a game on the show that I stole from their show. Right. But then I came on your show, and you're just like, "How about this?" Yeah, right. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't have to steal it. You yeah. offered it yeah. up. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we never. I don't know whether we ever even played it on here. I just went home that night. I'm like, I gotta get a fucking game on there somehow. <laughs> you know, it's one thing to have your own cupcake. That's great. And I'm very proud of it. And uh, I said, this is still the number one selling cupcake in. Chicago after like seven years. And if the Cubs win the World Series, each one of the Cubs will be given a cupcake. They have to pay for the beverage, nice. but they will all be <laughs> welcome to come to Molly's where Ron Bennington's got his own cupcake. Nice. Yeah. That's huge. That's beautiful. Yeah. But there's teas and coffees and, and milk and stuff sure, that you want to purchase. I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to go in too deep. But yeah, you know? nobody <laughs> wants to walk out of there all. Cupcake dry mouth. Though. Yeah. All, all you got to have a beverage. All the starters are going to get cupcakes, and then anyone who's not started or any of the equipment guys gets a mini cupcake. And they're just as delicious. I mean, they're tasty. People bring the mini donuts and the donut holes uh, to Douglas movies. I don't like throwing those so much. I like a big, <laughs> messy, maybe yeah. uh, with something with red filling is always great because oh. if it hits right, it just it looks like somebody's been shot. Now, does it explodes. That, that, yeah, I mean, you're in these gorgeous theaters. Does anybody say, hey, do me a favor. Don't throw around cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the Gramercy normally is rock shows. So yeah. The floor is a mess after every show. So, right. they, so they're totally down with it. But the Wilbur Theater is really nice. It's beautiful. And uh, they have a couple balconies. So we like we try to get the donuts up to the top balcony, which is not easy. And it, it, there's probably some chocolate stains on the walls there. The Gramercy, though, is one of my favorite places. There's just yeah, something cool. so cool about it. And I don't know whether you can see it from your angle, but they'll open the door, the front door, and you can see people walking by on the street. People just come by every once in a while and just look in like, what the fuck are they doing? Here? <laughs> <laughs> is that the weirdest <laughs> AA meeting? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... I love doing it there. That last, the last time I did a show there was the thirtieth time that I did Douglas. Wow, man! There, yeah, and uh, they're they're super nice to me. So I'm going to do uh, two shows at the end of November, like uh, right after Thanksgiving. One of them, of course, the Christmas show, which twelve guests, twelve guests. Some of them leave early, right away. Yeah, well, you know, they're they're on stage for a good half hour before the games start. Right. But then once we start playing, you're out. Get out. Yeah. Go. I, I have your Uber wrap. We sound I, off a Hunger Games cannon <laughs> in honor of each uh, death on stage. <laughs> um. All right. So let's play a little bit of the game that you say is now just rocking America. Yeah. And I'm it's very Ron upset. Bennington's adjusted for inflation bureau game. <laughs> A.K. Mojo Rising. Because <laughs> we use Box Office Mojo. Yeah. I will name somebody. How do we decide who goes first between the, the, the three? I think you it's going to play, you play Yeah. Play. I think mm -hmm. it should always be Gail first. Okay. Always? Yeah. Oh, I like okay. that. This is, do you want to stack choice. it against yourself and let Chris always go second? Sure. All Chris right. Always go second. So, yeah. I'll so, Ron's got to try to... If Ron wins today, it's yeah. after getting the scraps. Right. That'll be it. Each time. Because I usually like to rotate it around because going first is is pretty crucial in this game. Yeah. Uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to name an actor or actress, and then you just have to say, starting with Gail, uh, what you think is in their top three. Okay. And if you get number one, you get three points. If you get their number two movie, you get two points. And if you get their number three movie, it's one point. And I've got uh, like three or four rounds prepared. Great. Tiebreaker. 
Oh, this is exciting. I this like is this. really exciting. So <laughs> <laughs> Don't you wish we were all eating Ron Bennington cupcakes? Right yeah, now? I would really we make it complete. Yeah, the next time we come back. <laughs> No beverages, though. Oh, mm. right. And this is, uh, this is a real, uh, you know, uh, current, I try to keep it current, okay. uh, topical kind of uh, suggestions. Plus, I forget who I've played this with, with before. <laughs> um, so, plus, it could change. But this is their top three, adjusted for inflation. That's an important piece of information to remember. Okay. That's why it's in the title. And the first name we're going to do, in honor of all those folks that are trying to evacuate Florida right now that might be listening, Matthew McConaughey. That's a tough Hurricane one. Matthew McConaughey. Be safe down there, Florida. Okay. I am going to say, God, it's like really tricky. I'm trying yeah. to think. He's so many movies. So many movies. I am going to say, you have to have exact title. Uh, I, I like an titles. exact title, but yeah. if we know what movie you're talking about, I won't hold you to it. Um. Okay. So I'm th- I'm thinking I'm trying to think of a complicated Matthew McConaughey title. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember what the <laughs> what the one that he did with Tom Cruise and it was like a big over the top comedy and they were making a movie in it and he played the like agent. Oh yeah, yeah we yeah, know yeah, what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. For sure. What you, is what you want that one? Yeah, I want that you one. You want Tropic Thunder. I want Tropic, yeah. Tropic Thunder. Thunder. Okay. What do you want, Chris? I can't remember the name of my movie either. It's the one where he's... <laughs> it's a, oh, it's a new twist on the game. Describe a movie to Doug and Ron. <laughs> he's in space. <laughs> and Matt Damon's there too. <laughs> Who else is there? Matt Damon. They find Matt Damon on another planet. What? No, we can't give you that one. <laughs> Not Inception. Just say Inception. Inception. Okay, okay. that's wrong. Now, I think... <laughs> I mean, I think he's had a couple big ones. Interstellar. Is uh, yeah. well, it certainly wasn't the one that you were thinking, but then I was also thinking that he was in. Did you blend contact. Interstellar and The Martian into that, one movie? Yeah, yes. Is that like, what happened? <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. Uh, I have to pick one, but I'm thinking it's got to be either Interstellar or Contact, which he was also. Uh, people forget yeah. he had a smaller role. I forgot about that. So I'm gonna go Interstellar as mine. Ron, you're the only person to gain points in this round. Wow. Interstellar is his number two of all time adjusted for inflation. Number three, you said it, contact. And number one, Magic? this is crazy. His number one movie after adjusting for inflation is A Time to Kill. Oh, my oh, God. With Sandy I Bullock. Yeah. Oh, my God. That one would never spring to mind as a big McConaughey yeah. hit. You, no way. You could give me all day and I wouldn't have remembered that one. Tropic Thunder was probably uh, up there pretty high. That was pretty successful. Yeah, I thought that was a a, a big but he's box just, office. He's a guy. Yeah, he's a guy that's been out there slugging away, and he's yeah. and he you know wins awards and has a good career, but uh, not too many huge hits. No, not too you many. Know. I was thinking even Magic Mike could have been up there, but I guess yeah. not, huh? Or one of the like ten ten ways to lose a guy and oh, yeah, eight yeah. ways to have a date. Uh, let's do the next round. Okay. So this is all time gross, though, right? Not gross weekend. It's all, all time. time gross. Yeah. And again, sticking with the hurricane theme, the man who played the hurricane, Denzel Washington. So this is a great one because this is okay. tough. Okay. All right. I'm going to say his biggest one was Training Day. Oh, really good mm. bet from Training Day. That's a good one. Denzel Washington. All right. What do you got, Chris? Glory. Um, see, I think... I think the question mark at the end was, was smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's glory. Uh, it's glory. <laughs> it's what? I'm, again, I'm, I'm stuck between two, and I'm going to pick and not cheat and say two. I got to be thinking either American Gangster or Pelican Brief are my two. I'm going to try American Gangster. <gasps> Ron. Yeah. Number one, the Pelican Brief. Oh! The Pelican Brief with Julia that Roberts. Was huge. They were both no, big I remember, stars. I remember watching. I watched it a few times. Yeah, it's a complicated movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number two, remember the Titans? 
Oh, oh, big yeah, football yeah. movie with the football kids. And then number three, Crimson Tide. Oh, oh I forgot oh, that shit. too. No points. With Gene no Hackman. points. Why didn't I pick Pelican Brief? I would have got points. Oh, my God. You would have got so many points. Crimson Tide points. is fun because it's a good, really good movie. And it's uh, two great actors, Hackman and Denzel, going head to head. But do you remember the, the, that they had the uh, Tarantino polish on it? Yeah. And uh, so there's a scene early on where Denzel's talking about Lip is Honor Stallions. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, and his passion for them. Yeah. And it was, again, it was something like, why would these guys be talking about this? It was just out of nowhere. A silver surfer. I'm like, what? <laughs> that, All right. was, that also could be one of the great sweaty movies. Of all time, <laughs> where everyone in that movie was sweating constantly. Yeah, probably uh, Das Boot also. Das Boot was, was great for that. Any and, submarine movie is going to yeah. get sweaty. And uh, and um, down Periscope. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a sweaty film. <laughs> body Heat, very sweaty, sweaty. film. Oh, yeah. As you would imagine heat. from yeah. title. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you bring up Body Heat rec- recently? Like I, 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 I bring probably it up mentioned one a lot. Today. Oh, because Sam May Day Malone <laughs> oh, was t- in it. Dancing, yeah. dancing. Yeah, he's a dancing fool in that yeah. movie. He is unbelievable he's in that shuffling movie. Shuffling around. That's the first time I remember Ted dancing in anything. Mm-hmm. I think he was also in the Onion Field. I think he was one of the uh... great fucking call. <laughs> he was fucking yeah. murdered, right? He was yeah, like I think really he was one of the murdered cops yeah. in the Onion Field, and he was so fucking panicked in that scene. He was like. He couldn't, he was like a nice guy cop. That film, I hadn't even thought about in so many years. It's unbelievable. Yeah, pretty good stuff. All right, so Ron has two, and Gail and Chris, the <sighs> less said about that, the better. Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, there's another hurricane mm. that's going to blend with Matthew. What's the theme of this? That's what they're saying. Right and that's Hurricane that's Nicole Kidman. Okay. Oh. oh. Nicole Kidman. Nicole Kidman. I have a couple in mind. You know, it is difficult to be first because the amount of time you get to think on it. You know, oh, that's you get true. first choice. And it also could jog your memory of like, exactly. oh, they mentioned this movie, but now that makes me think this other one. You're right. Okay. I am thinking of, okay, I'm going to go with a movie that I'm trying to remember the title so I don't just <laughs> describe it to you. Onion Field. <laughs> <laughs> she was a child <laughs> from Down Under. <laughs> but she and Ewan McGregor loved one another in a musical. Moulin. Moulin Rouge. <gasps> Moulin Rouge. I will take the Moulin Rouge. Okay. Chris? Days of Thunder. And that ties in because that movie was shot in Daytona. Perfect. Right. I'm going to go. I know she was in a Batman film, and I don't mm. always know the names of them, but I think it was Forever, but I could be totally wrong there. But I'm going to go Batman Forever and just roll the dice. Coming in at number three, Days of Thunder. All right. Nice. And by the way, they thought that was a flop when it happened. That was like, they were rough on Tom Cruise after that came out. Yeah. Uh, One of the greater movie character names, though, of all time for Tom and that. Do you remember? No. Cole Trickle. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Cole Trickle. Robert uh, DeVal was all over his dick in that. But (laughs) (laughs) he was a real dick trickle. You can't go into... A restaurant in Daytona without seeing a picture of Tom Cruise because <laughs> yeah. it was there for like three or four Should months. Eat everywhere. Yeah, there's not, not a lot. Of, yeah, there's not a lot of places to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming in at number two, this is a uh, throws everybody off. This kind of thing when it happens because there's lots of stars do animated films. Ah, uh, number damn. two, Happy Feet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The original yeah. Happy Old Feet. Happy Feet. Yeah. yeah. And that is true. You never pay attention no, to their. I don't. Mm, mm, mm. And number one, Batman Forever. No! Whoa! Damn! Whoa! Uh, Who would have thought Ron Bennington would be great at the Ron Bennington game? You know, the what th- a twist. <laughs> this is something. Now, here's the thing. We'll know the next time. He Doug... memorized every yeah. actor's. <laughs> That's what I do at night. Listings. I have an Indian come in and just keep drumming it to me over and over and over. 
Uh, but that uh, that's actually a pretty hard game. It's harder than it's a, very difficult. Here's yeah. what happened when I invented it. We went with big, you know, like Steven Spielberg or Martin Scorsese. But when you think Nicole Kidman, yeah, now you got to go in a whole different area because she could. In this case, that wasn't a large part in Batman Forever. I also, you know? I'm mm-hmm. shocked that Moulin Rouge, I felt like that didn't go away and people were obsessed. No, that was a huge movie. It a so massive- it's probably, you know, four or five in there. But also, yeah. you know, Days of Thunder mm-hmm. came out earlier than that one. So they probably got a little advantage for the uh, inflation adjustment. But let's do, uh, I got one more round. Okay. So if Chris gets three on this one, he could uh, oh, tie it up God. with Oh, God. I'm just trying Good to luck. get kill count one Good here. Luck. And yeah, <laughs> you're just, yeah, you're just... I'm uh, just- you just want to play it for bragging rights. Yes, to not embarrass myself. Doug Loves Movies is in Boston this Saturday. <laughs> so, of course. Go to DougLovesMovies.com for a ticket to additional dates. And Doug Loves Movies returns to the Gramercy Theater in New York City, November 27th. Well, Thanks, exciting. Fez. That's exciting. I'm Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Wahlberg. Oh. The great Boston actor. He is a great Boston actor. Love him. I was just thinking about him because uh, Dennis Lehane, they're doing another one of his, uh, another, Ben Affleck is doing another one of his books into a movie for Christmas this year. And, and Wahlberg's um, in it? I don't know if Wahlberg's going to be in it, but all those guys, all the Boston guys fight over this guy's books. It was the Gone Baby Gone. They turned into a movie. Um, he's just, was the town? Yeah, the one town was one of his books as well. Mystic River. Uh, Mystic River. And the other one was Mystic Shutter Pizza. Island. Oh, Shutter, Shutter Island. Island. <laughs> yeah, Mystic Pizza. <laughs> Girls love that movie. <laughs> yeah, but it's not in Julia Roberts' top three. Yeah. I can guarantee it. What do you got for Mark Wahlberg? Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> I'm trying to think of his like biggest big budget. He's done some real big he's ones. He's done some really big ones. Yep. Yeah. And no for matter some where reason, he is in the world, he's got that accent. I can't <laughs> Boston. really place it. I mean, I know he was just in like a rig- really big, big kind of box office comedy. Yeah, yeah, sure. There's a giant. Do you want to go third on this round? You, you can go third if you want. I want to think about it a minute. I've okay, got to go, go third. third. <laughs> Chris, do you want to go first? I'll, go, for, I'll, I'll go first. Yeah, Jump in, Chris. Transformers 3. That's a good one. If we're on stage doing my show, I'd say exact title, the heart and you'd probably be screwed. The heart of... you'd probably be screwed. It's not Ultron. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I got one I think was enormous... But I, I'm worried about one other sci-fi thing. I'm just going to give my first thing. I'm going to go, we did this with George Clooney, and it was a giant hit, and people cried. Perfect Storm. Fits the theme of the day, too. Yes. Oh, Perfect Storm. Mm-hmm. All right, I've thought about it. Yeah. Okay. It's a little silly, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to go Ted. I think Ted. Huge. The other one big. I think could be in there is Planet of the Apes. We could all get blown out by Planet of the Apes. Well, first of all, Ted is not silly. Came in at number four. Whoa! Was right, you're right on the cusp. Right there. on the outside of winning uh, points. So you get a cusp Every point. Every time. Yes, that's good. <laughs> that's good. You're learning your melody today. And <laughs> Beto's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Ron he pulls for me. Yeah. Ron with his show off double answer number two, Planet of the Apes. Oh. Whoa. Yeah, I knew that was going to be huge, even though, again, it was seen as a flop when it came out. Chris gets one point for this round for coming up with Transformers 3, a.k.a. Transformers Age of Extinction. Extinction. Should have got yeah. that, Chris. That Damn was easy. But and yet now there's a fourth one coming out. I don't know This movie. If you use the word extinction in a title, it <laughs> should be it. It should be done. Um, and then number one, you got it, Ron. The perfect storm. Boom! Whoa. Oh, so that was Ron a gigantic... runs away with this thing. That was a well. If we play seven the... points, yeah. If we play Chris Stanley uh, game, which is just stuff to heckle in a theater while other people are trying to watch, <laughs> that is a big thing with you. You like to yell out in the theater. I saw. Yeah, it's, it's, I can't help myself sometimes. You know, yeah, it just happens. What's a good example? 
at one time um, <laughs> he yelled out, and I think this is one of your best ones. Thank you. Bitch got wasted yeah. uh, when a woman was killed. Yeah. You yelled, bitch got wasted. Yeah, when I, when I saw a jarhead, <laughs> yeah. I would just scream, well, Steve and Willie Beeman, anytime Jimmy <laughs> Fox would come on. Smart. On the stage, on the air. Smart. People love it in theaters. Sometimes. Well, they do it with Rocky Horror. I don't know if they sure. like it any other time. <laughs> I know in Rocky Horror, they love it. I still the think fun. from uh, Penn Jillette used to say, whenever you, they show an establishing shot of a city, no matter yeah. what city it is, you <laughs> should say very loudly, ah, Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you want to play the tiebreaker, even though there's no, <laughs> even yeah, though Ron know. ran away with it? Yeah. <laughs> I wrote it down. We might as well do it. Yeah, let's down. do it. We talked about this guy at length the last time I was on the show because we were talking about what he thought his top four movies were. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Great Nicolas Cage. Do hmm. you want to start us off? Oh, Who wants to okay. go first this time? Um, I will say... Let's go with Face Off. Oh, Damn. good face one. slash off. Face off. Mm -hmm. The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Okay, you're weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? It was a big budget. <laughs> you're, oh, you're weird. <laughs> it's the biggest movie of all time. Do you think you got a movie star waiting around for that script um, to show up? Maybe. It's, it's Nicolas Cage. I think I know this one because I think I've heard it talked about before. And it's not any of the ones that we would think. I think it's a Disney film that he did, which is that National Treasure Book of Secrets, whatever the hell the name of that is. I, I don't know. You mean National Treasure Book of Secrets? Oh, is that the name of it? <laughs> number one. Number one. Yeah. 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 Coming in number two, The Rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With Sean Connery. And number three, the original National Treasure. Because those National Treasure movies they were, well for were huge. No Sorcerer's Apprentice? That did not. I don't know Let how me far down. Four. You could look it up now and tell us how far down the list it is. I'd like to know. <laughs> I'd like to know if mine is number four as usual. <laughs> what, what is yours? Face Off. I said Face Off. Face good, Off was a giant movie. That's a pretty good guess. That's probably yeah. up there. Kick Ass is pro uh, uh, probably up there pretty high. All right, Sorcerer's Apprentice is like 15th. Yeah, okay, roughly. That's, that's why. Where's fun, Face yeah. Off? Face Off is 7th. Got to take your face. And you're definitely looking at it adjusted for adjusted, inflation? Adjusted for inflation, okay. yeah. Because then another way to go with the game is they also give you worldwide grosses. So that's another thing it's to say, whole hey, what do you thing. think about worldwide, everybody? Yeah. Because the number one movie worldwide is not the number one movie in America all time. Right. We got two different ones. What's the worldwide? Well, what do you think number one yeah, in America? Yeah, what's worldwide for uh, number, Nick no, Cage? Number one all-time movie is still the James Cameron, I'm Fighting with Blue People. Oh, okay. But uh, the Star Wars, the newest Star Wars was the is the number one for America now. Oh, okay. It's hard. It's very strange how big that that uh, that movie was, and it just, it just went away. It's not like people continue to talk about talk it. Talk about or, it. Yeah, or the yeah. way... But I don't think people sit around and talk about movies for years anymore because there's normally another one coming along the following week that's very similar to the one they just saw, you know? It's taking James Cameron so long to do to put out Avatar 2. Yeah. It's like he's going to he's missing going to miss the generation that cares right. you know cares the most about it. Well, he says his, age out of it. Yeah, he says his back hurts. So, <laughs> he just wants to take a little time <laughs> to, to fucking chill. My back is killing me. But you know that studio is going to be like we made 2.7 yeah. billion. Why don't you make another one, dude? Doesn't even have to be that yeah, good. I get it. We'll still get a billion out of it. He's making two at a time. He's making the second and third one at the same time. Oh, he's going to make us on ever yeah. work out? It can't. I mean, that, has that's... it ever worked for any they did it for the Matrix, and that was a disaster. Yeah, yeah. and the Back to the Future movies, the quality I, I arguably suffered from that. And then Lord style. of the Rings, I think, did it. Yeah. And I, I don't know really other stuff. And The Hobbit did it, too, even though that should have just been one movie. Yeah, but they're just making that on a computer. Yeah. There wasn't any humans in that. That was crazy that they... That they made The Hobbit is one book. It's not that long. It's like 250 and pages. And they made it into nine hours of cinema. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Doug loves movies. It's, it's really a fun night out. That's happening at the Wilbur Theater in Boston this Saturday, October 8th. Doug loves movies returns to Gramercy Theater in New York City, uh, November 27th. DougLovesMovies.com for tickets. 
additional uh, dates. And then you're all over social media. I see a scoping and <laughs> yeah. you just have a fucking blast wherever I like you go. To scope. Yeah. I'm a scoper. You have a good time. Chris, you did it for a while, but you've just about given up. I've, I have to reboot the whole scoping thing because I sobered up and I stopped smoking and it Made me a stranger person. Even so than I was. you lost all your little props that made it yeah. comfortable for you. <laughs> you. You don't drink and smoke. Yeah. So when you sit and just look at your phone by yourself, you don't feel it's comfortable. Stra- it's strange. It's just yeah. a whole different thing. Yeah. All right. He's struggling. The, the, you know, they say there's no act to an American. Chris Stanley is proving that <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, now you're going to be on Opie today. Or you uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Because I love. Yeah, this building and everybody long loves elevator having you in. rides. Yeah, <laughs> um, security people. At, everybody's aren't. everybody's crazy when you come in here too, <laughs> and we're getting more and more shit in the hallway, so you can barely breathe. <laughs> All right, tell me when we're wrapping up because I know we got a hard wrap. Now. We're wrapping in one minute. In yeah. One minute. Nice. Oh my one minute. So. To the people in Florida, and, uh, you know, Gail grew up in Florida. We lived there for a long time. Take this shit seriously. Now, SiriusXM has teamed up with the Weather Channel as public service live coverage on the storm. That's uh, Sirius 184 and XM Channel number one. You were able to find out where to go, what to know, because you're not going to find any hotel rooms now. That's they even, and they don't even have uh, storm basements aren't a thing in Florida. No, no, no. If There's you nowhere put, to hide. If you put a shovel in the ground, water comes up. No matter where you are in Florida, it's just yeah. there's just nothing underneath it. It's a sandbar. You're living on a sandbar, folks. Uh, but that's it for us. Hope starting over on his channel. In just a couple minutes. This is uh, Bennington, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening! Yeah.